Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Good morning. Good morning and happy Sabbath to our online audience. Um, you know, I stand before you this morning and I want to share a quick testimony. Ever since I elected to serve with this praise team this week and I saw the song set and I saw what the sermon theme was about, 
I've had goosebumps. I've been expectant because I just know that God is ready to do something miraculous in this place today. If only we would choose not to be spectators, but to be participators in this worship experience. So often we sit in here and we're giving and we're giving and we're giving and everyone's sitting with their hands crossed and missing an opportunity for a life changing encounter with God. So I'm pleading with you, whether you're at home, whether you're here, get these things in your spirit. I've been going through a season, a better part of, I don't know, two, three years, where I describe it as a season of being planted. If you think of a seed, I was planted. And when you're planted, you're under dirt and it's dark and it's painful. And some of it, saints, if I'm honest with you, was a result of my disobedience and him trying to transform my character to be more like him. Some of it was attacks from the enemy, but all of it, all of it was for my good. And the entire time when I would want to go to God and complain and tell him how I'm feeling, he would tell me, he would point me right back to Romans 8, 28 and say that all things all things are working together for your good and it was my decision to choose to believe God's word over what I'm feeling so if you don't feel like praising this morning if you don't feel like worshiping this morning yesterday we did a devotion we talked about reluctant obedience I challenge you to do it anyhow because the spirit of the Lord is in this place and where his presence is, there is provision, there is healing. I haven't been here in four weeks because I finally got COVID. And even though I was not in the hospital, I was with 102 fever. My body was racked with pain to where I was convulsing. But God, I stand here before you, not dead, but God is a healer. He's a healer. He's a provider. Anything that you need is in the house today. I challenge you to just reach out and grab it. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. Lord, we worship you. We thank you that your sweet Holy Spirit is here right now ministering unto your people. Lord, we desire an encounter with you. We desire that you would just come into this place and inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, we are expectant for a change in our situation because you are a God of miracles. And so we will step out on faith. We will praise you like, we, like it's already done. We will worship you, not for what we need, but because of who you are. And we know, Lord God, that you are worthy. So Lord, have thine on your way. Have thine your way. Let your will be done in this service. Touch every aspect of it. Yes. Touch every person that's online. And Lord, do what you do best. Yes. Yes. In yes. the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm going to invite everyone to stand. And you at home, just wherever you are, rejoice with us in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Put your hands together. Come on. This song is saying, you have made me glad. If God has made you glad today, sing with us today. I'll give thanks. Say, I'll give thanks to you, Lord, and sing praise to your name, O Most High. I'll give thanks your love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. For you, for you, oh Lord, have made me glad. I will sing. Thank you, God. You now let's sing it again. I'll give thanks. I'll give thanks to you, Lord. To you, Lord. And sing praise to your name, oh Most High. I'll give thanks. Your love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. For you, for you, oh Lord, have made me. You made me I will sing for joy at the words of your hand and rejoice at what. Oh. 
promises. We're standing on the promises of Christ our King. Amen. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Standing on the promises of God. Let's sing, church. Oh, you can keep putting your hands together. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that's going to be. Amen. This is never going to stop. Here we go. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages. Through eternal Christ, our Lord, standing on his promises. Do that to us. Do that for him today, church. Do that with us today, church. Here we go. Let's take it up. 
standing on the promises of Christ the Lord. Found to him eternally by love's accord. Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Yeah, standing. standing on the promises of God. Think about how faithful he is. How many know he's faithful? I don't know what you came in needing today. I don't know what you came in having needed, but he answered the call, did he not? God is a good God, and you're here today because he's a faithful God. He's woken you up this morning. He's put breath in those lungs. You ought to sing praises to his name. Come on, sing with us, sing. Love is faithful, 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 faithful. faithful.
happy Sabbath and welcome to church. For those of you online, thank you for joining us today because church is open. Amen. Church is open. And we invite you if you are, if you just had a blessed experience and you want to experience that in person with your brothers and sisters, you still have time to get yourselves ready and come on over to our 1130 service. Join us this morning. There's a lot of wonderful things happening in our lives. And so we'd like you to be a part of that. Remember, register yourselves because we are still keeping a safe distance and we are wearing our masks. So if you see this little graphic up here, that means somebody's not wearing their mask, so please do so, so we can keep everyone safe. Um, today, we have care for the homeless, so please join our youth in Fort Lauderdale. I believe the time is 2 o'clock, so please join them today. And you also have to register for for that so people know that you're coming and we can we, we know who's who's going to that so please join our youth in helping us care for the homeless this afternoon today is i know you saw a blip of that slide but what is it today is communion and we are just a little bit off in our weeks because there's been so much going on here at plantation we would love for you to come and be with us tonight as we celebrate what the Lord has done for us, as we also unite in, in testimony and praise. Please come. For those of you who would like to partake at home, we have emblems here that you can pick up now until the end of our second service. So we have communion emblems here so you can partake at home. However, this might be the last time that we are doing communion um, live streams because we want to encourage everyone to come and join us in person for communion. So enjoy this possible last time that it'll be live streamed for it won't be, it might not be live streamed after this. So please come tonight. Also, right after communion, we'll be having our church members meeting, our, our business meeting, where you can come, where you can stay and give your voice to what is going, all our happenings here at Plantation. We invite you to do so. Now, I don't know how your week has been. For those of you who have kids going back to school, who started, who started this week? I see some right, yep, and parents, how you doing? You still alive? Excellent. Kids, you still alive? Very good. So some of us have had crazy weeks. Some of us have had celeb a celebratory week. Some of us are in mourning. But we praise God that he is still sitting on the throne, that he is walking us through each of our journeys, and that we can remain faithful to how he is present in our lives. Let us pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for bringing us through another week, Lord. Thank you for new beginnings as our children start again in school, Father. Lord, we have walked a few journeys this week. Some have been fantastic. Some have been heartbreaking. And Father, we cast all our cares upon you. For you hear it all, you know it all, and you are providing through it all. And so Father, we are here this morning, communing with you and with one another, bringing all of ourselves to your throne. Be with us, Father as we await your answer to our prayers, Father. Thank you for your continued blessings and goodness to us, Lord. And we look forward to your soon return. In your name, amen. We have had, we promised you last week to show you the results of all your prayers and effort for our health fair. And so I'm going to invite our audio visual team to play our video for you now.
I have met the most wonderful people. This is such a great event. It's your inaugural health fair event for 2022. And I'm looking forward to supporting it today and for years going forward. So we're really excited that you came here to Central Park and whatever we can do to uh, get the word out. I definitely want to check out the other health uh, conscious uh, vendors here because I think that's amazing that we're here together as a community to get fit and healthy and well together. So that's my goal to get out and around to see the other practitioners. They seem really willing to like learn about what's going on and like um, ask questions and do all the stations and things like that. So I think we're doing a really good thing here. Um, I think we should do it a lot more often. I believe today was a wonderful event because a lot of people get exposed to, you know, natural ways that they can heal themselves without having to be totally dependent. And the, all the natural way, new start represents starting new, using free stuff. I think it's also important to just educate, like, hey, this is what we're doing, and we're here to help you. We're not here and to normalize it. And normalize that it's okay that if you're a little overweight, here's some ways that we can reduce your weight. You know, walking 30 minutes or doing, um, you know, eating more healthy, things like that, that they may or may not know. So it's really important. Um, all of the stations are really, really good, um, have great information. So, so far, it's been a very positive experience. The atmosphere is amazing here. I love it, for sure, definitely. Being here present, I think it just has cosmic um, success throughout many, many communities, especially our community. We're going to do this next year. We are so excited. We know, we know what to do even better now. And uh, we know what the community needs even better now. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it again next year. And it's going to be a, even a bigger turnout, I'm telling you. It's going to be great. Church, did we do a good job? <laughs> Elder Nick, was I correct? Did we see our plantation um, representative Nick Sortal doing Zumba yes, with we us? Did. We yes, did, we did, right? He came out and we had a whole bunch of new vendors. Yeah, and we, we have video of you Zumboing and Pastor Rose doing the Zumba and a few other people. So if guys, and you need any information <laughs> later on because you need to get something done, I've got the video. See me at the back of the church. The blackmail Zumba. <laughs> So we just want to say again, thank you guys so much for coming out. Um, the video you saw here was actually kind of early in the beginning, that, uh, that aerial shot. But if you were there maybe an hour later, the place was incredibly packed. It was a wonderful day. But the entire time we've been speaking about this, Pastor Jen, was the health fair was a moment in time, an opportunity for us to say hi to our neighbors. But what we really want to do is get into a, a more long-term relationship with them. And your health doesn't change in just one day. It's something that you have to work at. And that's what this is about. And that's the 18-day better challenge uh, to challenge the better health. And actually what's going to be happening is we're going to ask the church, if you guys were involved in New Start, if you've learned a little bit about it, and you want to step into that arena of a better healthy lifestyle, that we're doing an 18-day challenge. It's going to be led by Elder Barbara. And the principles of New Start is something that we're going to live out for 18 days. So it starts when? When does the 18-day challenge start? So it's going to start on August 20th in the evening. We'll be here for kind of like an orientation where Elder Barbara will explain everything to you and what's going to happen with the challenge. And then you're going to get a diagnosis and assessment of where you are when you start. So some of the things that we did for the community, we'll get an assessment here as well. And then on the Sunday, Elder Barbara is actually going to go out and start a shopping list. You guys are going to be invited into a Facebook group. So it'll be done as a community. You won't be mm. doing this on your own. Each day she's going to get on and lead you guys and talk with you guys about what's going on. And then on the Monday will be day one of the 18 days. So Elder Nick, this wasn't just a, a one day big party in the health fair or educational matter. This was the beginning to? Yes, it was the beginning of this journey to better health. Yes. And then, and I'm sure you guys know this, one of the things that Ellen White says about the health message, it is the right arm of the gospel, but she says in the last days, this is the number one way that we can spread the message of Jesus, is by helping people find better health, just like he did by healing and reaching them. But it should start with us. We should be working on this ourselves. And then as you go on this challenge, invite your friends and your neighbors and get into relationship with them like Jesus did. Beautiful. So join us for our challenge. But however, despite, um, apart from our challenge, for those of you who were not here, who heard some of the updates last week, 
What happened with the people that came? So the, the guests that came, and what was beautiful is sometimes when we do events, it's mostly us. But there were so many people from the community. I'd like to say hundreds of people from the community came through. And they were asking for, where's your church? When are you guys in church? I heard, and I haven't spoken with Brother Alex since, is that two people asked to be baptized. I don't know if you have yeah, any more information I heard that. than that. Yes. But there are numerous people who asked for Bible studies. So listen, if just one person was affected, was affected yes. by what we did, it was worth it. If it was just one, yes. right? He says he leaves the 99 mm -hmm. to go find one. And we have been given the privilege to be involved in what Jesus does. So that to me gives me goosebumps as I'm standing here. It was an amazing day. I heard a story where someone had asked, what's the catch? Why are you giving this all? What, what, what are we paying you? Are we paying you anything? Why are you giving it for free? And it's because we just want to give back what we know. And one story that came on the prayer line was of somebody who had been of a different religion and saw and learned and now is requesting Bible study based on what they learned that day. And there are, there are many stories like that, especially what was done with the kids. For those of you guys that donated backpacks and supplies, I don't know if you understand what you did for some of those families. And my wife was working in the kids area and there was a little girl, maybe to the point of what you're talking about, who just kept asking, why are you doing this? And, well, is, do we have to pay for this? No, it's free. What? And her mom was just, just overcome with joy yes. because she had so much need. And just a tiny little bit we did made an impact in their lives. So again, I say thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And join us for our 18-day challenge starting next Saturday, August 20. Thank you. story we have a great story for you where is our children Do we have any children that are gonna come up today you have on your masks very good have a seat right here and then I see some children that are in the congregation can you wave your hands wave your hands good because I'm gonna talk to you this is gonna be an interactive children's story this morning this morning guess what I did I brought some fruit because the Bible says that to get to know Jesus, we have to have fruit. Oh, did you know that? Did I get that right? To get to know Jesus, we have to have fruit. What kind of fruit do I have here today? Maybe you can help me. What's this? Oh, come on. What is that? Yes, mango. And then what else do I have here? What kind of fruit is this? Apple, yes. Okay, what about this one? Lemons, very good. Lemons, lemons, lemons. And then bananas. I love bananas. We have this kind of fruit because it helps to make our bodies strong and gives us the energy and everything that we need. But did you know that the Bible talks about another kind of fruit? He talks about another kind of fruit. And that other kind of fruit, we can't eat it. Do you know what kind of fruit that is? Let's see what kind of fruit it is. Oh my goodness, look at that. This fruit is called the fruit of the spirit. There are nine of them, nine fruits of the spirit. So let's go through, who can tell me about love? How do we show love? 
caring for people. Oh, beautiful. When we care for people. And when we, what about give hugs to our parents and we're showing that we love them? Excellent. What about joy? Anybody? What's joy? When you're happy. When you're happy. But you don't need things to make you happy. That's joy. What about peace? Peace. Peace is when you're not worried. You're not worried because what? Jesus is going to take care of you. You know he's going to take care of you. So there's, there's peace. You're not worried at all. What about patience? Who can tell me about patience? <laughs> she said it's hard. <laughs> what about patience? What can you tell me about patience? About waiting for stuff. That's right. What about you're hungry and you're ready to eat and mom says, be patient. It's coming. It's coming. That's patience. That's one of the fruit of the spirit. So when you're patient, you say, okay, mom, I know I'm hungry, but I'll wait. That's patience. What about kindness? Being kind. Yes. What about being kind? Give me an example. When someone trips, you help them up. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't know if everyone heard that. She said, if someone trips, you can help them up, right? Being kind. What about goodness? Goodness, goodness, goodness. Not doing things bad. Very, very good. It's just about doing things that are right, right? Doing things that are right for, for others, just doing things that are right, period. And who helps us to do that? Yes, Jesus helps us to do that. What about faithfulness? Faithfulness. Faithfulness is a tricky one. Faithfulness says that anything that God asks us to do, he can trust us to do it, right? So we're being faithful. He knows because he watches us day by day, and he says, they're always trying to do what I asked them to do. So we're faithful. So that's faithfulness, and that's another fruit of the Spirit. What about gentleness? Being gentle. Yes, being gentle. We don't want to be harsh, do we? You know, no. Gentle. What about self-control, guys? Self-control. It's when you're angry, you don't have to take it on someone. Oh, I love that. She said when you're angry, you don't have to take it out on anyone. You know, there's self-control. What about when there's a plate full of cookies in the kitchen? <laughs> and you know you're not supposed to eat the whole plate of cookies, right? So what's self-control there? We just take what? One. We just take one cookie because we know that if we eat the whole thing, it's not going to be good for us. That's self-control too. Very good. Thank you for helping me with um, sharing uh, the fruit of the Spirit. So... What we know that the fruits that we have here, these aren't really the fruit of the spirit. These fruits here are fruits that we eat and they grow on trees. How do you think the fruit of the spirit grows? In our hearts. The fruit of the spirit grows in our hearts as Jesus works on us every day as we learn about and doing all these things that are here um, under the fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, patience, patience, uh, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those things are helping us to grow in our hearts and grow so that we can be kind and loving and show Jesus to others. Amen. I'm going to ask all of us to bow our heads for prayer as we remember the fruits of the Spirit today. And after service, if you look for me, I have great treats. They're fruit treats to remind you about the fruits of the Spirit and carry it with you. Dear Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for being with us today and learning about the fruits of the Spirit. And we know that you've given your Holy Spirit, dear God, to be with us and to share um, to be with us so that as we meet people day by day, that we're learning and exemplifying the fruits of the Spirit daily. In Jesus' name, we pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
you so much for helping me. Sabbath Church. Happy Sabbath. I hope you guys are having, well, had a blessed week and having an awesome day today. Uh, today's off, Titan offering is for Christian record. Uh, Christian record. Today's verse, John 6, verse 12. When they had all, when they had, had all enough to eat, he said to the disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. We can worship with our resources when we follow God's instructions about economy and savings. In several instances, God has taught his children to practice uh, of savings. He inspired Joseph, the son of Jacob, to, you know, to tell Pharaoh to save uh, during the years of abundance, to save at least 20% 20, uh, 20 of the, the abundance. He also, uh, during the Passover, the first Passover, before leaving Egypt, God's first instruction was for them to choose the right size of lamb according to the number of their family. And at the end of the multiplication of bread and fish, the clear admonition was to let nothing be wasted. This is a message about Pennywise or uh, pertinent for today. We are preparing to, for eating more than what we need to buy, buying more than what we need to wear, and building houses with far more space than what we need to live. The consumption-oriented society influences us to adopt a criterion other than what we need, acquiring goods. If I can pay for it, if it's available, or if I have uh, borrowed money, then it's okay. This can be socially acceptable, but is it good stewardship? Is it good stewardship? Saving will help us prepare for the life's emergencies, realizing major financial goals, prepare for retirement, leave a financial legacy, and in to enjoy other benefits. Furthermore, there will be in a, we will be in a better position to partner in God's mission. Jesus and his missionaries were supported by a, gr uh, a group of women who used their own means. This is Luke, 8, uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 3. The early church members sold their properties to provide for the beginning of the Christian's missions. Acts chapter 4, verses 30, 34 and 35. Ellen G. White challenges us to properly channel our resources. Each should keep missionary box at hand and drop into every penny he is tempted to waste in self-indulgence. Councils on Stewardship, page 291. Is it not time to identify and fix the packages or the leakages in our lives, our financial lives, this week and have another opportunity to use our savings to worship God by bringing our tithes and regular offerings to Him. When we have this opportunity, church, to really be a part of God's glory, let's take advantage of it and give to Him. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for all that you bless us with, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for helping us to see the possibilities of how we can add to your glory, Lord. How we can be a part of your glory and just watch your miracles happen, Lord. Bless us all abundantly as we give freely and wholeheartedly with love and, and kindness to you. Let your will be done. In your name, we ask this, Lord, and give you thanks and praise. Amen.
going to invite everyone to stand as we continue to worship our Lord and Savior, my goodness. Sometimes I wish you guys could be back with us or even on a Friday night hear some of the devotions and the testimonies that go on. Literally just now we just heard an amazing one and I won't get into that, but I will say this. We serve a faithful father. Does anyone know? Can I get like at least five of you who can agree that we serve a faithful father? He's an amazing God who heals, who saves, who restores. I don't know if you've been in a situation where you felt his healing, you felt his deliverance, and not just felt, you've experienced it. And God is such a good God. It says in Zechariah 4, verses 6 through 7, that it's not by might nor by power. We can't do anything in our own might or power, people, but it's by his, what, spirit, by his spirit. And in, in, in verse 7, it talks about, it says, who are you, O great mountain? I, I know there's a mountain in somebody's life today. Who are you, O great mountain? I need you guys to say that to your mountains. And guess what? The word of God says that it shall become a plain. I, I want you to understand what's happening here. That very obstacle, the thing that's meant to keep you back, to get in your way, God is saying he is going to destroy it. He is going to level it. He is going to dominate it. I don't know if you guys really, really believe, but God is a God of domination. He will dominate whatever it is. That's your obstacle today. All you have yes. to do is ask him yes. and believe in faith yes. that our God will answer your prayers. Yes. Can yes. I get a witness today? Amen. And he's a faithful father. Thank you, God. my faithful father calling me out of the dark and I cannot whisper away what he said in the light he is my firm foundation my anchor won't be moved storms may Come on, sing with us, say, wind listen, sing. Wind listen to the sound of power on my lips. Power on my lips. So Jesus, Jesus is broken, is broken the curse. He is never lost. He has never lost. A battle. A battle. Who are you? Who are you, great mountain? Come on, say. You should not bow low. So Jesus. Jesus defeated the dark. He is never lost. He has never lost. The battle. The battle. Come on, lift it up. Say. And he never will. He never will. No, he never will. And he never will. He never will. My God never loses. And he never will. He never will. Oh, he never will. Let's sing it from the top. He is my. He is my faith. Oh, come on, let's God all sing. Calling me out of the dark. And I cannot whisper away what he said in the light. Oh, he is my firm foundation. My anchor won't be moved. Storms may collide, but my soul. To the sound 
And he never will, he never will And he will testify And he never will, he never will he never loses a fight And he never will, he never will oh. Sickness and health And he never will, he never will Over your finances And he never will
great defender. Come on, all over this place, say it, say it. Our strong tower. He's never lost a battle. 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 Come on, sing that again. Sing that again. Our great defender. Our great defender. Someone needs to believe that today. Yeah. Our strong tower. Our strong tower. He's never lost a battle. Sing that one more time, one more time. My great defender, my great defender, our strong tower, our strong tower. He's never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. He's never lost. He's never lost a battle. Someone say hallelujah in this place. Someone give God the praise today. He's never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know. But all of us are going through a battle somehow, some way, in, in so many ways. It could be in your home. It could be a child you're praying for. It could be your job. It could be even a ministry. Something that we're going through today and we're looking at it as if it's hopeless. But Jesus has never lost a battle. Jesus has never lost a battle. For those of us who were mourning the loss of our, our family members, let me tell you something. I read the story. And the story ends in victory. Because one day in resurrection morning, my friends, we shall see your loved ones again. Because he had promised that he has gone to prepare a place for us. So regardless of how desperate the circumstances may look in your life right now he wins at the end he have never lost a battle and he would never lose it you can trust him right now in whatever circumstances you're going through Deuteronomy 20, 20 verse 4 says that the Lord your God is he who goes with you against your enemy and he would give you the victory do you want to experience victory today? Do you want to experience victory? The invitation today is for you to surrender. Surrender. And over the battle to Him. He is willing and able and powerful to do more than you can do by yourself. Let it go. Allow Him to take over. <laughs> he has never lost. And he would never lose. Do you trust him? Do you trust him? If you're going through something right now, I'm going to invite you to come. And I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. If you are on online and you have a specific prayer, just go ahead and text prayer. And someone would reach out to you. You are not alone. You were not alone. Jesus would never leave you nor forsake you. Let's pray. Oh, kind and loving Father, what an awesome God you are. Our great defender, champion of all, God Almighty, there is none more, no one, no one, no one like you, dear God. Oh, Father, you've never lost a battle, dear God. And we come to you this morning in humble adoration, dear God, surrendering all to you. Turning it over to you, dear God, because you and only you are able to help us, dear Father.
Father, you and only you, you're the God of influence, you're the God of resources, you're the God Almighty, great physician. You are worthy to be praised, oh Father. We can look back and trace how good you are to us, oh Father. Today we say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done, dear God. Oh, Father, right now in this church, there are many petitions, dear Father, before me in the pews and then online, dear Father, but nothing catches you by surprise. I present them to you right now, dear God. And as I pray, dear Father, I pray that you will empty me of anything that is not of you, dear God. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness as I intercede on behalf of your people, dear God. Remove anything right now, oh Father, in our hearts that is not of you. Anything that would hinder our prayers to go up to you, oh God. Remove the doubt, remove fear, remove anxiety, remove everything, dear Father. Fill us right now, dear Father, with confidence. For the God we come right now in front of is a God almighty who is able and willing and strong and powerful. That's you, oh God, that's you. Father, right now there are petitions, oh Father, for marriages, oh God, who are struggling. For children, oh Father, who are struggling, those who are going back to school, oh Father, maybe those who are struggling with financial aid, your Father, they need you. Maybe it's a single person, oh Father, who has been praying for the longest, oh Father, and, and, and they need someone, dear God, I pray that you would fix up, shape up. And send someone, oh God, for that person, oh Father, who feels alone. Maybe there's someone at home right now watching and then they're saying, yes, I hear all this, but I'm alone. I feel alone. What can I do, oh Father? I pray that they would feel your warm embrace. I pray that they would hear your gentle voice whispering. That you would never leave them nor forsake them. Oh, Father, there's someone who's sick, they're struggling, oh God. Cancer is still real all around, oh Father, and this COVID's still around. Father, I pray that you would reach out and touch someone who's desperately in need of you right now, dear God. Remind someone of who we serve. The God we serve is one who's never lost a battle. I would never lose one, oh Father. Even when things look hopeless and we have lost it all, remind us all, dear God, that we serve a God who owns it all. And that one day we will all be restored. <laughs> and we're taken to a place where there will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more pardon, dear God. We look forward for that day, dear God. Restore hope and joy, oh Father, in each heart today, dear God. May we not leave today feeling the same way, oh God, but may we, may we leave transformed, renewed, and filled with the Holy Spirit, dear God. Fill us so much with the love of Jesus, oh Father. When we leave this place, may someone see us, oh Father, and say that there's, a, there's something peculiar in us, oh Father. May they see Jesus in everything we do. Father, we pray for the one you've chosen this morning to bring the word. Oh, Father, we pray that you would touch him. Anoint him, dear God, and may every word that come out of his mouth, oh, Father, be words from you and you alone. May we all be blessed, oh, Father. May we be drawn into a closer relationship with you. This is our desire. And when the time shall be no more, we pray, dear God, that you will grant us all a home with thee. Is our prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Our great defender, our strong tower, he's never lost a battle, he's never lost a battle. Our great defender, our strong tower He's never lost a battle He's never lost a battle He's never lost He's never lost a battle
praise God. He's never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. A uh, God like that deserves to be worshipped. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Good morning, neighbor. So glad that you could be in church in person. And for those, uh, I'm tempted to say sorry souls are watching us online. You should be in the house. But for those watching online, we've come to worship. Let me, wor let me welcome every worshiper. And let me assure you that God has blessings in store. We affirm and declare that all the other gods of the nations are idols. But our God made the heavens and the earth. be having our communion service this evening. The communion service provides us with an opportunity to reaffirm our faith, to reaffirm our commitment in Jesus. May I remind you that the communion service is not for perfect people. But it's for those who sense their unworthiness, even as they cling to the worthiness of Jesus. And so I invite you this evening to come and share with us as we dine at a Lord's table and as we renew our faith. So here we go again, making our way back to Calvary. Here we go again, reviving, reviewing and reliving the drama that unfolded there. And though it all happened over 2,000 years ago, there are some of us who are still intrigued by it. We're intrigued by its shifting scenes and stages. Intrigued by its varied archetypes, most of them evil, but some of them good. All together, they project on the screen of history the story of our redemption. We are fully cognizant, fully aware of the fact that the events of Calvary were not just for the history books, but they are for the present and the future because they are ever living elements of the assurance of salvation. Today we'll be looking at Golgotha's Hill through the eyes of an unlikely character, hoping to find both inspiration and affirmation for our faith in Jesus. Additionally, it is my hope that someone today, upon hearing this soldier's testimony, will be drawn to follow Jesus. So as we look at Calvary through his eyes, we'll do so beneath the caption, A Soldier's Confession. A Soldier's Confession. We turn our attention to our focus text, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27. The verse is verse 54. Matthew 27, verse 54, reading the New King James Version's rendition, it says, So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they, they fared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. I read again for emphasis. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they fared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. This 
is the word of God, and I believe it. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your presence in the service thus far. And as we continue now in worship with your words, we ask that you will remove every distraction. You will arrest every attention. And you use this feeble, mortal lump of clay to share words of truth, words of hope we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So when the centurion, Matthew wrote, and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they fared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. Now, neighbor, it's very instructive to note that this character in the drama and his statement have been recorded by the synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, albeit with a slight variation on Luke's part. In Mark's account, Mark says in Mark 15, verse 39, Mark 15, verse 39, Mark says, so when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, truly, this was the Son of God. Luke, in his account, in Luke chapter 23, verse 47, records, so when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, certainly, this was a righteous man. Now, neighbor, when you put it all together with its variations, a composite of this man's involvement and declaration emerges. You see, there were many folks there that day, and most of them were shouting and mouthing and hurling insults and disparaging words at our Lord. But this man, and note, according to Matthew, along with his compatriots said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Now, I don't want you to miss that the Bible says that he was a centurion. He was a, he was a what? He was a what? He was a centurion. You know, the Bible records in the King James Version the role of centurion some 21 times in the New Testament. And when we look at that narrative in Matthew chapter 8, where, where centurion came to Jesus, asking him to heal his servant by just saying the word. When we look at this narrative in Matthew's gospel chapter 8, I believe the narrative provides us with some insight into the roles and responsibilities and power and authority of a centurion. And so let's move there briefly. Matthew chapter 8, beginning at verse 7. The man had come to Jesus asking for his servant to be healed. In verse 7, Jesus responds, and Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But in verse 8, the centurion answered and, and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only, don't miss this, but only speak a word and thy servant will be healed. For I also am a man on authority. Notice, having soldiers unto me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. As the kids would say back in the day, game was recognizing game. He said, Jesus, I am a man of authority. I know what it is to give orders and my orders be carried through. I recognize you as a man of authority that you don't need to come where I am. You just simply need to say the word. Ah, friends, it was the same Jesus 
who stood, stood, stood in, in times past and stood out into nothing and called it into something. It was the same Jesus who spoke and it was done, who commanded and it stood fast. This man knew that all Jesus needed to say was to say the word. Because there is power in Jesus just uttering the word. Would somebody say amen? amen? But in verse 10, the Bible says, When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed him assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith not even in Israel. Verse 11, And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. This centurion, this man who was not a part of the chosen nation, had such great faith that Jesus commended him. He said, Lord, you don't have to come to my house. I'm unworthy for you to be under my roof, but all you got to say, do is say the word. A centurion, according to Josephus was, a, was, an, was an officer in the army of ancient Rome. Centurions got their name because they commanded a hundred men. Several paths, according to Josephus, led to the position of centurion. Some were selected by the senate or the emperor. Others were elected by their comrades. But the vast majority were enlisted men promoted through the ranks after serving some 15 to 20 years. Centurions, they were responsible for training, giving duties, and maintaining discipline in the ranks as, as company commanders. Centurions, when the army was encamped, they oversaw the construction of fortifications which were critical in enemy, enemy, enemy territory. And, and when the army was on the move, the centurions escorted the prisoners, procured food and supplies. The centurion. You see, the Roman army was an efficient killing machine with the centurions leading the way. And in battle, neighbor, the centurions, they stood on the front line leading their men. They were expected to be courageous and, and to rally the troops during the tough fighting. The expansion and maintenance of the empire was due in part to these courageous fighting men. A centurion, therefore, was not some wishy-washy, mamby-pamby, in touch with his feminine side type of fella. No, he was a man's man, hardened by his training and war. He was not susceptible to impressions of either fear or pity. And yet our text says, so when this centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, the Bible says that this courageous man, this man who had no fear, no pity, the Bible says that he along with his compatriots, they feared greatly and, say, and said, truly this was the Son of God. Oh, in my sanctified imagination, permit me, but I can see him now. He was on duty that weekend. According to the tradition, to some tradition, they call him Petronius, some call him Longinus, but we'll call him Petronius for our purposes today. Petronius, I believe, had no idea when he signed on to work that weekend that it was going to be consequential. No doubt by this time in his career, he had seen and overseen many a crucifixion. As far as he, as he was concerned, this was just another day on the job for him. Just another day at the office, if you please. At least, so he thought, just another day to hoist and hang high. Another seditionist, another insurrectionist, another self-claimed would-be Messiah, another deliverer of the Jewish nation. 
He had seen it all before. He was no neophyte. This was not his first time on the job. What do we have here, boys? Well, boss, we got three, and the one in the middle, he's the king of the Jews. Really now. All right, you, you know what to do. Let's string him up. But as he went through what seemed routine to him, he couldn't help notice that there was something different about the fellow in the middle. He had seen many criminals, many malef malefactors. He had dealt with such characters. It was part of his job. At the time when it all began, he couldn't quite put his finger on it, but no, no, something was, was different. Petronius was used to seeing felons kicking and screaming and hurling insults at them and at the people and even their gods as they were led to their execution, but not this man. There was a certain noble, dignifying bearing about him. It was as if he didn't belong, he didn't quite fit into the scenery. He seemed out, out, of, out of place as far as Petronius was concerned. You know, he first observed it as the convicts were being led from Pilate's judgment hall. It bothered him. There was a gnawing in his gut. He just didn't feel right about it. It didn't feel right to him. And then there was the darkness. Darkness darker than a thousand midnights that descended on Golgotha's hill at high noon. And an earthquake that shook the very foundations of the earth as if nature was crying out to its creator as he hung dying on a blood-soaked timber. As a man who no doubt believed in omens due to his culture, Petronius saw these as signs from the gods. This was no ordinary crucifixion. And so he declared, not in whispering tones, but with a voice that thundered about the hurling insults of the crowd, truly this was the Son of God. His booming baritone voice wafted along the ether waves and found resonance with his men who all came to the same conclusion truly this was the son of god clearly cataclysmic events coupled with the extraordinary restraint humility purity and love shown by our lord in his death made this man of war, made this hardened soldier, along with his compatriots, realize that truly this was the Son of God. You know, neighbor, Luke in his account records in chapter 19, 37 to 40, he records the triumphal entry of our Lord. When he entered Jerusalem that week. And Luke says that when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the people were beside themselves. They were praising him and, and calling him the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Praising Jesus. They were ready to make him king, much to the consternation of some of the leaders. And these leaders turned to Jesus and said, hey, you better tell them to shut up. That's not a good thing they're saying. That could get us in trouble with Rome. And that could, and that could, that could compromise us and, and make our positions irrelevant. You better tell them to shut up. And Jesus said to them, hey, hey, know this, that if I tell them to hold their peace, the very stones would cry out. But you know what's interesting and one of the things I find so interested in the drama is this that some of the very folks who had shouted Hosanna on Sunday were now hurling insults and shouting crucify him on Friday. That some of the folks who had sang from one hymn book on Sunday were now singing from a different hymn book on Friday. That some of the folks who had one lyrics, a set of lyrics on Sunday now had a different lyrics on Friday. 
And I must tell you as a spiritual leader that I've come to realize that the approbation of people is fickle. That people may praise you and commend you today, but you make one mistake and they're ready to toss you aside. You don't build your leadership. You don't build your commitment based on people's affirmation. Hurling insults. But not this centurion. No, 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 not this centurion. You see, according to what Jesus said on Sunday about if you, if, you, if you told the people to keep quiet, that the stones would cry out, may I submit that this centurion was one such stone. Hello? Because he was not part of a chosen nation. He was not expected to, to cry out when everybody was calling him murderer and, and criminal and false prophet and, and false messiah. This, this, this heathen said, truly this was the son of God. It's amazing how... Sometimes we can miss the very thing that is so close to us. Sometimes we can miss the very thing that is at the very, on the very bridge of our noses. Sometimes our judgment can be clouded with our own predispositions and our own selfish thoughts and ideas. When Jesus died as far as some were concerned, he was a failure because he was not the Messiah that they had desired. They had desired one who would come and liberate them. They had desired one who would restore David's throne right then and there. But Jesus didn't fit the bill. Well, no, he was a suffering servant. And it is still amazing every time I think about it. That amidst all the play and counterplay of Calvary, this heathen centurion could declare, truly, this was the Son of God. In closing, Ellen White, in commenting on this in her seminal work, on the life and ministry of Jesus Christ that is of ages, page 770, she says this. In the bruised, broken body hanging upon the cross, the centurion recognized the form of the Son of God. He could not refrain, she continues, from confessing his faith, Thus again, evidence was given that our Redeemer was to see of the travail of his soul. And may I add and be satisfied. It's amazing how God, through the power of the cross, could call a man who for all intents and purposes were raised and trained to be a brute, God could call him to declare truly, this was the Son of God. Ah, oh, may I declare that there is still power in the cross of Christ. There is still power in the fact that Jesus died. There's still power in the fact that he laid his life down. There's still power when the gospel is proclaimed that men who may be insensitive and men who may be trained to be hard and rough, that God can still draw them with the cross of Christ. Amen. Still remember in years ago, I'd gone on a tour an evangelistic tour of the former Soviet Union preached one week in Russia and one week in the Ukraine and it was there in the Ukraine in the city of Pavlograd that I met him 
we're doing the meetings there and and I was preaching to people who did not look like me didn't even understand what I was saying directly and I had a interpreter call Eugene and I'll tell you a story about Eugene in a minute Eugene and I would meet and we would go over the sermon together and he would do the translation. Most of the folks in that region in Pavlograd, they spoke Russian. And so he'd go over the, the text. We'd go over it together, working together. And then while we're doing this, my host pastor, Pastor Mikutuk said, Pastor Rose, there's somebody who wants to see you. And this man came and offered to take me to one of these war museums, a tour, an awesome tour we had giving me a beautiful history of World War II. And, and as he spoke about the history, I, I said to him, Anatoly, you know, God is more interested in your future than your history. That's all I said to him. And then another day while we were going through the study together, Eugene and myself, Pastor Mikito came again. He said, Pastor Rose, Pastor Rose, I need to ask you a favor, please. He said, did you come prepared to do, a to do a baptism? I said, no, I didn't come prepared. I just came prepared to preach. That's all I came to do, to preach the word, just to preach the word. He said, no, no, now please, you've got to do the baptism. That's what he mean, you've got to do the baptism. He says, he says, listen, listen, that fellow Anatoly. I said, yes. He's, he has decided to be baptized. I said, hallelujah, praise God. No, 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 Pastor, you don't understand. This is a big deal. This man in this region, he was the head of the Communist Party. In the Soviet years, this man had power. But he said, he, 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 will, he will be baptized if you do it. I said, suit me up. And next week I'll bring the pictures, but I, I wish you could see the pictures of me and this big burly fella standing in this pool people coming out from the villages to see this man give his heart to Jesus because the power of the cross still saves today at the communion service Pastor Jen once again we'll lift up the cross of jesus and i know somebody is going to believe the praise team is going to sing i believe and then i'll come and make a call we'll close we'll transition into sabbath school let's all stand let's all stand as we sing our closing song Sing in this time of desperation. Here we go. In this time of desperation, it's desperate times we're living in. But all we know, all we know is doubt and fear. Come on, someone say, There is only one, there is only one foundation. We believe, we believe. Come on, let's sing that again. In this broken generation, come on, say. In this broken generation, all is dark. All is dark. You help us see. There is only one. There is only one salvation. Come on, proclaim it. We believe. We believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us. And He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back again. Say this part with some conviction. So let our faith be more than anthem. Say, so let our faith be 
that today in those meetings 2006 and by the way I had opportunity to speak with some of those those folks months ago when the war began that side but in that meetings we baptized 215 persons the only person who spoke English was my interpreter Eugene. Funny story about you, you, Eugene, as we were rehearsing and he would stay in a corner and just mount the words as I was preaching and breaking a sweat. And so I said to him in one of our sessions, I said, now, now Eugene, when I'm preaching and getting all excited, you can't be just in the corner just mouthing the words. I said, you gotta, you gotta mimic me. You got to get excited as I'm getting excited. He said, all right. When I was leaving, he said, Pastor Rose, he said to me, Charles, Pastor Rose, you've turned me into a black preacher. <laughs> you see, friends, the cross still has power to save. I don't know who you are and where you are, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the Son of God. We believe that, don't we? And that he's coming back again let's pray together father we thank you for your word the certainty that we have in your word that jesus came the first time and he did oh yes he did if he lived and died and rose again yes he did oh yes he did we know that he is coming back again yes he will yes he will pray for that man that woman that boy, that girl, perhaps in house or online, who will watch it in, in the near future, that your spirit will speak to his heart, to her heart, as we lift up the cross of Jesus. May someone be drawn to him, we pray. In his name and all of God's people say, Amen. Happy Sabbath, church family.
Praise God. Here we go. Here we go. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty on, see. Wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. Words Thank of you. life and beauty. Teach me faith and do. Yeah. Hey. 
morning, Sabbath School. Good morning, everyone watching online. And also the uh, members in the audience as well. We welcome you to our Sabbath School panel this morning. To my left, to your right, it's uh, Brother Muzat Porsena. Um, he'll be discussing the lesson with us. With us. Good morning, brother. Good morning. Amen. And to my right, to your left, it's Brother Charles. Nice to do the lesson with you this morning. That's the first. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, brother. And to our viewers online, as you're watching, you can grab your Sabbath school quarterly and watch with us or study with us this morning or review the lesson with us this morning. And also, if you don't have a quarterly handy, you can go to ssnet.org, ssnet.org, and you'll find the lesson there. Before we start with our lesson this morning, lesson number seven, Indestructible Hope, we'll bow head for a word of prayer, and I'll ask Brother Charles to start us, start us with prayer. Let us pray. Kind of uh, Heavenly Father, you have brought us here today to study your word, to study your lesson, Father, that you prepared for us. May we be prepared, Father, to deliver the message that you have in our hearts, Father, be with us, Father, as we go over this word. Father, may we be clear, precise, and realize that we serve a capital G God, and not a lowercase g God, completely, Father, in your holy words. In your name I pray, hallelujah, amen. Amen, amen. Indestructible hope. In this life that we live now in the 21st century, it's hard to imagine a hope that is indestructible. It's almost an oxymoron for us living now. The memory text is found in Romans 5 verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given, who was given to us, Romans 5 verse 5. Like I said before, it's hard to, under, to try to understand a hope that will not tarnish, that will not be, that will not disappoint. Because we have experienced so many things in life, and when we go through trials and tribulation, we think sometimes of our own self and our own disappointment and we think that nothing around us matters and it's hard to imagine that brother charles you were gonna say something it's it's incredible that we focus on the disappointments and not the victories that god has brought us through somehow they seem so more overwhelming than the victories and, and sometimes too you look at it you feel that God, God is putting you through some stuff in life mm -hmm. and living you, you, living you there. <laughs> brother, brother Moore. Yeah, it's, like, it's like God is leaving us hanging yes. sometimes. And I was just thinking when we talk about the hope being indestructible, but then we can't think about that because, you know, we've been through a pandemic. We've been mm. through loss. We've been through yeah. financial issues, marriage issues, children issues. And it's like sometimes it's hard to find that hope. And as you were saying, Charles, we, we look on that negative, and it's just mm -hmm. like we, people always say, people always comment on the bad things. Mm -hmm. When they want to compliment you, they're silent. But when they have something bad to say, you hear from everybody. <laughs> Very bold. <laughs> and it's almost like this indestructible hope. Yeah. You know, we should always have hope. It's always yeah. there mm -hmm. because God is always there, but then we focus on the bad stuff. Yeah. I'm glad you said God is always there because the hope that the lesson we'll be discussing or we saw this week throughout the lesson, it's not the hope that we have things are going to get better. And we're going to see that in the big picture with Abacuc and all that. It's not the hope that things is going to be better. Through this lesson this morning, what we are going to focus on, what we are going to see, it's our understanding of the character of God, which you mentioned, mm -hmm. and how that understanding help us to maintain hope, yeah. to maintain hope 
when the rubber meets the road. Like the song say, when the going gets tough. Mm -hmm. Now, when the going gets tough, gentlemen, how can we see the big picture? How can we see God? I'm going through my stuff, and it's hard. Yeah. I don't see no light at the end of the tunnel. How can you encourage me to see the big picture mm -hmm. and what that big picture can do for me in that moment? Any takers? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I cling to is I just go back to the scriptures because there are countless stories of failures and victories and the victory always shines through. And when you're going through that, there's always a scripture that will lead you through it. Mm -hmm. And just hold on tight because the promises of God, if you're following God, the promises of God are the promises of God. Mm -hmm. So continue to focus on the promises and what he'd say he'll bring you through because he's there right there all the time. He's not just waiting for you to figure it out yourself. He's there guiding you. Just hear the message. Amen. Amen. I was thinking that, you know, one of the ways for us to, to see the big picture is to start small, mm. right? Start in, in our lives, okay? Because when we are going through it, whether we're going through financial struggles, the bills are coming in hmm. and not enough money, bills are coming in, not enough money is coming in. So you're in the negative every month and you just don't see that light at the end of the tunnel. But yeah. there is a way. Yeah. There is a way. So if we start small and we, we have the hope that, you know what, God, you're going to help me find a better job. You're going to help me control my finances. You're going to help me just start to to pay down my bills. Right. You're going to help me to manage on a monthly basis. We'll start small. And then once you start to make a little bit of progress, mm -hmm. you can start to see the bigger picture. The bigger picture is going to be, I'm going to be financially free. The bigger picture is going to be that I'll be able to pay for my kids to go to college. The bigger yeah. picture is going to be that when I retire, I won't have any financial obligation. So if we try to start small with the things that goes on in our lives, and we can think about that bigger picture that God has. So when he puts us through the crucibles, okay, whether it's a, a monthly, weekly, yearly, or just a period in your life crucible, we need to focus on him so we can see that bigger picture. And that bigger picture is not just that he's going to get us through the end of that crucible, right. but there's so much of a bigger picture than that, right? right. Yes, right, and, right. And, and God's promises. I wanted to add for the uh, audience here uh, watching us live in the sanctuary, feel free to ask question. Feel free to ask question. I'm watching and now I'll probably ask the coordinator to probably prepare a mic for us. Just raise your hand and I'll take the, the question on the audience. And I know we're taking question online as well, so we'll just go through that. I am glad what you mentioned brother charles about mm -hmm. god's promises yes. focus on god's promises when things get tough but the more things start with the small things it's the small experiences that we have with god that right. can bring us to the bigger experiences when we go through exactly, them exactly. the big picture also we have to keep in mind that that big picture for me that big picture it's in the grand scheme of the battle between good and evil right because in the grand scheme of things it's never about you it's about what god has planned his promises and what he has planned for everyone not just your little things you're going with but a bigger issues that it will bring the world to where he has his plans has the world to be and the issue with it's not about us and we yeah. always think it's about me. Yeah. The issue is that is we want to serve a God that is predictable. Yeah. We want to know what God is doing, <laughs> you know? Right. And sometimes what God is doing, you may not be able to comprehend now. You got to look at the grand scheme of mm -hmm. things because there's God, there's Satan. There's good, there's evil. And in the battle for the soul of humanity, for you men on earth 
It's not we are left here on earth to be on our own. God is fighting for us. And the same token, Satan is fighting to bring us yeah. down with him. Yes. And that same um, mind frame, mm -hmm. God is purging also. That's why the lesson this week is talking about the crucible. Mm -hmm. Who our father is. Yeah. Who is our father? Who our father is. <laughs> Let me read this. Um, Oswald Chambers writes, have you been asking God what he is going to do? He will never tell you. God does not tell you what he's going to do. He reveals to you who he is. And that should be enough for us. Um, it asks the question means his idea. What does he mean in his idea? Um, we as God's creation are owed nothing is what he's saying. For we are not worthy to know the process. But when you know him, know that he's always there and always there for you. We have a way of wanting to know every step of the plan. In reality, God is in charge in the process, in, in the process and we are recipients of the outcome. Trust in the Lord at all things. In Job, in Job 29, 2.29, Job's wife says, why don't you curse God and die? For he has lost everything but his life. Job's wife's actions remind me of, reminds me of um, Satan tempting Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. Playing a game of poker or power mm -hmm. with the very person who owns all the chips and holds all the cards. For he has always been defeated and he knows this. His wife speaks not of a sound mind, but influenced by Satan, obviously. For to curse God would show that Job, under great pressure, would relinquish his faith in God. Let's pause and think, in this circumstance, how will we, how will we be, behave? How, what will we do? What will we think? And this day, not just because we're in church, but in our real circumstances, how tough of a situation Job was going through as he had lost everything mm -hmm. in himself his life. And his friends and everyone else is going on with everything. They still have all of their possessions and still has everything, but just Job himself has lost everything. Let, let me ask you this, Brother Charles, and I'm going to come to you, Brother Moore. How, how important is it to know God and not know what he's going to do in our lives. Because then we have our own judgments and try to say that, oh, God doesn't know what he's doing. And you even go further behind in a wormhole. You have to trust God. That's all you really have is to trust in God and continue to follow his teachings and what he's, he's in the scriptures. Because that's our guideline. Amen. If, Amen. You, if this is your guideline, you have to trust God. Amen. Amen. Good point. You know, the only thing that should be predictable about God is that we know that he's always in control. Amen. And we know that he loves us. Amen. <laughs> but anything else, we can't figure him out. And we shouldn't. Because if we could figure God out, then human nature, and we have seen how humans have behaved, we would try to act like we don't need him. Yep. You know, I mean, of course, people point. still do that today. <laughs> but if we try to figure God out, that would be we would be in a world of hurt because we would try to think that he is not necessary. And, you know, I just I love the lines in the book of Job when, you know, Job is complaining and he's talking about what's going on in his life. And then God responds and he's like, where were you? <laughs> where were you when I was forming the the earth where were you when i created you where were you when i was forming the atoms in your body where were you when i always existed yeah. and you came about because i chose to bring you here this is who our father is he is the one that has created us the yes. one that loves us the one that has our best interests always. at heart 
Always. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Job is going through his suffering. I mean, that guy's went through stuff. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you have 10 children, you lost all of them. Then, I mean, you lost all your financial um, mm -hmm. um, security. Mm -hmm. Then you lost all the one that are dear to you that came out of you. Yeah. Then at the end of it, God put Job in the questioning <laughs> sequence of things and not really tell him, him mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. he was suffering. Abacuc, same thing. Daniel, they're looking at the yeah. suffering and this in their time, and they're asking God, you said 70 weeks in the case of Daniel. What's up, God? What's going on here? Mm. Seven weeks is, 70 weeks is done. Then God gave him um, um, 1,810 years <laughs> and gave him 2,300 years prophecy. Yeah. Then Daniel was just like, okay, now I'm going to go through all that suffering. But at the end of it, at the end of it, it's God promises. Yes. It's God's promises, knowing that God has it in control mm -hmm. and he's going to do it his way. And in doing it his way, our crucible will come. Amen. Amen. It's, it's, it's an illusion as Christians to think that our life will be hunking dory, roses mm -hmm. without, without thorns. thorns. And, and, and for us to think that, would have us love this place, which is not our home. Powerful. Powerful. Powerful statement right here. To think that it's going to make us believe that this is our home, and it's it not. is not. Nope. It yep. is not. Because it's not our home, we're not going to feel secure. That's right. We're not going to be without pain. But this is what I want to touch on in the lesson. How fathers presence how crucial how important is it to know that god or our father is here before you go into it brother mo I, I when i was growing up if i know my dad is home i'm not scared of anything but once he left the house i would not go anywhere that's dark <laughs> nowhere that there's no light in it, I will not go there. Actually, I will sleep with my light on. <laughs> but if my dad is in the room, light can be off. So how important is it to know our fathers, of our father's presence? That's, that is such it's, a great illustration. It is. Such a great illustration because there's that security blanket that we have mm -hmm. when we know our father is present mm. when we know our parents are around right. we are we're more bold yeah okay we're more safe and secure sometimes we'll say stuff to people because our parents are around you know but if they were not around we wouldn't say certain things you know right. i'm sure all of us have seen that or maybe you've seen that in your kids and that's how we should feel every day mm. knowing that god's presence is with us the first line, um, the first question in this, in this lesson, I just love it. Mm -hmm. Someone once said, when God seems far away, who is the one who has moved? Mm. Mm -hmm. When we don't feel that God is around because we're going through our crucible and things are rough and we don't think he's there, who has moved? Did God move away from us? Or did we move away because we're going through our crucible and we think it is so rough and that, that, that goes to our um, kind of our self-preservation attitude. When we're going through a crucible sometimes, we try to figure out, okay, how am I going to get through this? How am I going to deal with this? And then meanwhile, God is standing, God is saying like, but I'm right here, but, but I'm right here. Why, why, are you not, why are you not asking me? Right. Why are you not talking to me? Because I'm right here, but then we're doing it. It's just like the children. I mean, you know, our relationship with God is, is always, the illustration always go back to us as yeah. parents. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because when you see your kids growing up and they start to try to do things on their own, and you're like, but, but I was right here. Why didn't you ask me? 
They try to climb up somewhere and they break something and it falls and then you come and you're like, what happened? And it's like, oh, I was trying to reach for this. And then you're like, but I was right here. I was, why didn't you just call me? And I would have, I would have gotten it for you. Nothing would have been broken. You would have been safe and you would have had what you wanted. Yeah. And God's presence is always here with us. And he's saying the same thing. I am right here. If you need something, just ask me. Don't try to do it yourself. You're just going to get hurt. And you think you, you're independent enough, but you're just going to hurt yourself. Mm-hmm. Brother yeah. Charles, you wanted to say something. Yeah, along that, we should trust God in all things. Even all things. those small things, things that we think are, he's not concerned with. Trust him in all things, and the turnout will be 100% better than what you thought. Um, that, the, 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 the lesson gave an experiment for us to try this week. I don't know if any of you tried it, but I didn't try it this week, but I've tried it before. Mm. It's to go every moment possible and remind yourself that God, the God of yeah. the universe, is close enough to you to hold your hand and he's, pro- he's personally promising you help. I've right. tried that before. I went one day... I know I was going through things. I was in school that time. I was in college, and things were tough in college for me. And then I just went through the day. I said, today I'm going to think that God is right here. Mm -hmm. If school is tough, things are going bad, I'm just going to think that and talk Mm -hmm. to him too. I went through that day, and I was very amazed to see how my Lord lightened that day. It's true to know that God is and he's yeah. there and he's present. And the story that we saw in the lesson, and you guys touched on it, and I, li- I like the lesson this week, is to see that though God brought Israel in exile because he was doing these things, mm-hmm. God was with them yes. in exile. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Daniel was in exile when the angel came and told him about the vision. So God is always present. And because he's dead, it's, it tells us that God has a very specific and particular love and interest in our being and transforming us for the right. promise, right. That, for the things that he has promised. Because we know that his kingdom will come. The, the Adventist hymn will have this. We have this song. We have this hope that burns within our heart. Mm -hmm. Hope in the coming of the Lord, and this is the promise. And when you take Habakkuk, you take Jeremiah, they were in exile. They saw the suffering of the people. You take Daniel, you take Job. In the midst of their suffering, they couldn't make sense of it. But they knew that the God that they serve. But now... How can I see God's plan through my suffering? Or what is God's plan for me when I'm going through stuff? Mm. Because the lesson say, how fathers plans for us. That's the le- title of the lesson. How fathers plans for us. What did we see in that lesson? Uh, it says everyone is looking for hope. Uh, but where is it found? And some people find hope in the smile on a friend. Some hope grows out of financial security or a stable marriage. Where do you normally find hope and courage? I personally look for hope in the scriptures, filled with stories of victories and forgiveness and a promise that a Savior is always there. With you, like, just, just like the three Hebrew boys, just like Daniel in the lion's den and Joseph sold off to slavery in a foreign land and becoming second in charge only to the king. These are stories that give you hope. Of Egypt, of the most advanced and influential country of that day, that points to a thought someone once said, it's not the money that you want. It's the things that money can buy. 
For if you are a millionaire in a country that doesn't accept your form of payment, you're essentially broke. Mm. <laughs> but when the Father owns everything in this world, and all you have to do is ask, mm. whether it be security, peace, financial stability, health, friendship, he is able to supply it all and there's no worth you could place on that. Amen. Abacuc, after he questioned God, if you look at Abacuc, um, I think chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, he comes to an, a sense of awe about God and he repented. Job, after God questioned him, he said, I abhor and repent yeah. in my sin because he understood who God was and what was his yeah. plan. Isaiah, when he saw the holiness of God, mm -hmm. cried out, Ho unto me. Us in the 21st century living here on earth, we need to understand that the closer we get to God and the closer we get to know his plans in our life, it yes. humbles us. Yeah. To a point where we understand that we should not trust in what God is doing. Hmm. Listen to me very hmm. well. We trust God. We should not look at what God is doing and lose hope. Let me put it this way. But who God is and what he has promised. promised. That's the key right there. Do not give up hope. Because God say, I bring you in exile. I'm going to take you out of it. Yeah. Count 70 weeks. Or for us, count 2,300 years prophecy <laughs> and look for the sign of my coming. Do not lose hope. Do not give up, give up hope. I don't want you to live here with the illusion that God is going to protect me and when I falter and discipline will not come, I'm not going to be able to I'm not going to, I'm going to be spared because I love God. God loves me, so mm -hmm. I can do everything I need to do. Now, how do we explain God's discipline, Brother Mo? Well, God's discipline, we can, we can imagine it like a parent once again. Yeah. Because when we read um, Hebrews, we see that there's um, how God disciplines those that he loves. Yes. And if you're not disciplined, then woe is you, because that means that you're not loved. Amen. Parents, we tell our kids all the time, right? If I didn't care, I wouldn't say anything. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do anything. I would just let you do whatever you want. And that is truly an indication of someone not caring, because they just leave you alone. They don't like you. They don't yeah. care about you. They don't say anything to you. That is a sign of someone not caring. So discipline is not just being, you know, beaten or spanked or whatever. Discipline is being corrected. When we're going down the wrong way, God, mm -hmm. God um, stops us. He, he shows us the way, and then he turns us back to the narrow path. So when we think about discipline, it's not just about a punishment. Discipline is also considered an education yes. you know in in my native language um, when people talk of they use the word discipline it's sometimes talking about what's your career what is your discipline hmm. you know when you have you've gone to school you've studied what is that discipline all right that you are going to focus on you know in your life so when God disciplines us it's not just to punish us he disciplines us in order to get us on the right path to teach us something so that we will walk the path that he wants us to walk before brother charles remember what you are going to say we have a question in the audience
Amen. Amen. He would not see any reason to get on the knees and pray to God and ask him for help. We go through, we, we, eventually we'd ignore him because everything's going on so smoothly. He lets it happen. He, you know, he's just, I'm telling you, this is what you should do because this is what love is about. Amen. 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 I, I really enjoy what the brother said, and I'm going to repeat for our viewers in short. God doesn't punish us. It's our action that brings us to place that cause suffering. Yes. God disciplined us where he will bring, even in our sorrow and suffering mm -hmm. that we have brought upon ourselves, he will find, he will give us the way of escape. And he mentioned 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God, through our temptation, God will always find, you can always find the way of Escape, Brother Charles. And, and to add to that, um, like Brother is saying here, we focus on ourselves sometimes, and it's not about us. Because God's idea, his grand scheme is to have you and the other people that might not know him come to the kingdom. So when these things happen, it might look like it's happening to you, but something else, someone else is watching it, and it's happening and helping them along that way. Amen. And, and the lesson, what I like about Thursday's lesson is the fact that it's the trials in our lives that brings the discipline. When you want to discipline someone, you want to give them a good character. We have to think of it this way. I discipline my children not because I hate them, I don't like them, is the discipline a right tools for them to walk in the straight path? Yes. If you want to make crooked line, don't put a ruler. You will definitely mix any crooked line you want. But the minute you put a ruler, which gives you a direction to take, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can only but draw a straight line. Yes. And sometimes in our lives, you need some broken up yeah. in order for you to straighten up. You agree with me? <laughs> yes. If you have a tree in your yes. house that's going this way, you but you want it to go it that way, you're going to have to put some rod and tie that thing up yeah. so that it can go straight up. Yeah. And sometimes you have that to rod. break that, that branch, <laughs> yeah. put it somewhere else so it can go that way. <laughs> <There> you go. <laughs> sometimes in our Christian yeah. life, we need some broken up in order for you to straighten, straighten up. up. And, and, and we're coming to a close. It's uh, uh, the lesson this week. I don't know if you have any comments, any things that you want to add. This is the time now. Brother Charles. On, on, just on the lesson, we were talking about the Father. Mo was talking this earlier. I wanted to say, <clears throat> as our jobs as parents, and that's how I see it, our job as a parent is to teach my kids the Father's way so that when we're gone, they can lean on the Father more so than what we've done. Yeah, our job is to set a path from the scriptures and when we're no longer around, they can make those decisions on their own. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, to mention um, back on Wednesday's lesson about our Father's plan for us and, and one of the important sources of the hope that we should have. And I just wanted to read what it says here, like one of the first things is that God tells his people that they should not give up hope because their situation is not a result of chance mm, or mm. unpredictable evil. Mm. For God himself says, I carried Judah into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Though evil seems to surround them, Judah has never left the center of God's hand. So God's plan is for us to always have hope Right. Because he wants us to know that he's always in control. Mm. He always sees us. He always knows where we are. And he has a plan for us. So though he may guide us, and I yes, I'm saying it. He may guide us into some crucibles. He's not guiding because he wants to punish us or he wants to discipline us. Right. Sometimes he's guiding us because he wants to refine us. Yes. Amen. He's guiding Amen. us because he wants to get better. He's guiding us because he wants us to 
walk on that straight and narrow path. Amen. I want to I wanna end. Um, we, we almost at the end of the lesson. I know there's a question in the audience. Forgive me for not taking the question because I'm pressed by time now. One, go ahead. Hold on a second. We have a mic coming up. We need to have first... Corinthians 13, that we need to have that chapter welded in our mind. Amen. First Corinthians 10, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we, have, we need to have, I'm repeating, we need to have that verse welded, welded the whole chapter in our mind. Mm -hmm. Let me finish with this, and I'm going to close with the memory text. Listen to this. On Friday's lesson, it says, into the experience of all, there come times of keen disappointment and utter discouragement. Days when sorrow is the portion, and it is hard to believe that God is still the kind benefactor of his earth-born children. Days when troubles harass the soul, till death seems preferable to life. It is then that many lose their hold on God and are brought into slavery of doubt, mm. the bondage of unbelief. Could we at such time discern with spiritual insight the meaning of God's providences? We should see angels seeking to save us from ourselves, striving to plant our feet upon a foundation more firm than the everlasting hills, and new faith, new life would spring into being. It's not about us. It's about what God can do in our lives and who God is, and the plan that he has for us. Amen, amen. Romans 5. Amen. Memory verse 5.5. Five. But listen to the first four verses. And I'm going to close on that. And after that, I'm going to ask Brother Mo to pray for us. The first four verses. The first four verses of Romans 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance character and character hope your hope start with tribulation it's through tribulation that you're gonna persevere and knowing who God is and have faith in him and that perseverance will be will bring character you always tell your children I want you to be people of character yes. but character yes. will bring hope Amen. Hope of Amen. eternal salvation. Hope Amen. of living in heaven with God. This world is not our home. We are just a passing through. Passing through. Brother Mo, close us with prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that hope in you does not disappoint. Hope in you, Lord, gives us the strength and the courage to carry on because of the love that you have poured out into us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, may we remember this when we face the crucibles in our daily lives, to have that hope everlasting, that you are near us, that you are holding our hand, and that we should never give up. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching with us this morning. Have a blessed Sabbath. May the Lord help us all and be with us this Sabbath. Amen.
Good morning and happy Sabbath. You know what, guys? Um, typically, as I watch and I replay and, and I'm, I'm, I'm part of the service, when we start, we say good morning, happy Sabbath. The person usually has to come back and go, y'all can do better than that. And I'm praying for the day that we come in here ready, ready to worship God, ready to just give him the praise that he's due. I'm going to give you a quick and short testimony because I came in here expecting today. And from what happened at first service, let me tell you something. If you want a life-changing experience, the Holy Spirit is here today. He's here right now. Over the last few years, I've been in a season and I, I called it a, a planted season because it was dark. It was dark, and if you know anything about season plants, I'm under the dirt, and it's dark, and it's painful, and, and, and if I'm honest with you, saying some of it was a result of my own disobedience, and God trying to refine and reflect his character in me. Some of it was a tax. Some of it God allowed for my growth, but all of it, all of it was for my good. It was for my good. And he kept pointing me back to Romans 8, 28. Every time I tried to come to him and complain and cry and talk about this person and talk about how I'm offended here and I'm hurt there and God, why, 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 why? He said, all things are working together for your good. And are you going to choose to believe the word of God over your feelings? Listen, today we singing about the promises of God. We're singing about his faithfulness. The word of God is about the cross that still saves. Whatever you're dealing with today, whatever you're dealing with online, I encourage you, don't be a spectator. Be a participant and watch God move. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We welcome your sweet Holy Spirit in this place. We welcome your presence in this place. We thank you for being a God that we can trust. We thank you for being a God that's never lost a battle. We thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that two weeks ago I was laying in my bed with 102 fever and COVID, but I stand here declaring that you are a God that heals. So, Lord, have your way. Lord God, your people are expecting. Lord, your people want an experience with you that will just change their situation. Deliver, Lord. Provide, heal, encourage, and bring hope in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand and, and worship with us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will what? Rejoice and be glad in it. I, I, there, there's a song that we're going to sing that says, you have made me glad. If God has made you glad today, put your hands together. Come on. God is too good to be quiet. God is too good to be silent. Oh, come on, sing with us. Say it. I give thanks to you, Lord, and sing praise to your name, O Most High. I'll declare your love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. For you, O oh Lord, are made me glad. I will sing for joy at the works of your hand and rejoice in what you Come have done. Again. Thanks to you, Lord. To you, Lord. And sing praise. And sing praise to your name, O Most High. I'll declare your love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. For you, O Lord, I make you glad. I will sing for joy at the works of your hands and rejoice in what you have done. Rejoice in what you Come have done. On, oh oh Lord, Lord, how great are your works. Say it again, oh Lord, oh how, Lord great how great are your works. How great are, 
today church we are standing on the promises of Christ the King amen his promises never fail standing on the promises of God amen yes oh come on let's keep it going here we go standing standing on the promises of Christ my oh, come on you gotta sing this song through eternal ages let yeah. his praises ring
can test, who can testify right now that standing on his promises, you never lose. He's a God of dominating your circumstances and turning it into victories. I know somebody knows what I'm talking about. We're standing on his promises. Let's take that up. Oh, standing, standing on, on the, the promises of Christ the Lord. Bound to him. Bound to Church. Standing on the promises of Christ my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Someone say hallelujah And thank you Jesus He's a faithful God how many can just raise their hands? I know him to be faithful myself. Delivers me, feeds me. When I need money, it's there. When I need the health, it's there. When I need the strength, it's there. He's a faithful God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, can you say faithful? Faithful, 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 faithful is our God. Reaping the harvest, God promised me. Back. 
devil. God has given it to you. It's yours. The victory is yours. Come on, tenors. us? Are we taking back what the devil stole, for, stole from us? Are we taking back our health? Are we taking back our finances? Are we taking back our children? Are we taking back our church? Look around you. I want you to know that just a few months ago, church did not look like this. But it's looking and it's coming back. We are coming back, and I am so happy today to say that church is open. For those of you who were watching online this morning and decided to come today because you saw what God is doing, amen. Thank you for joining us. For those of you online who are still watching from the comfort of your homes, let me tell you that we as your plantation church family are wanting you here here to worship in person with us. We are social distancing and we are still wearing masks. So if you see this up on the graphics, please put your mask on so we can keep each other safe. But it is a beautiful day when we can come together and praise God together, amen? Because we can encourage one another. So we thank you for making all of you, not only here present right now, but online, we thank you for making Plantation your place of worship today. We have good things coming up this afternoon. We have Care for the Homeless at 2 o'clock. So for those of you who know where to go, it's in Fort Lauderdale where we'll be also having our youth do this along with us. In fact, they're the ones that do do it, and we as parents go and support. So please come out at 2 o'clock to care for the homeless. This evening, we have, anyone know? What? Communion. We have communion this evening at 6. If you are still a little iffy about doing communion with us in person we have emblems for you to take home and and join us online and please give it out to your family and co-workers and friends however i would like to say that this may be the last time that we are doing communion online because we need to be together as a church and so enjoy this last night. If you are going to stay home and, and do it from home, you will be blessed there as well. But we will be missing you being with us here tonight. So please come tonight for communion at 6. And also right after that at 8, we'll be having our members meeting. And this is a chance for you all to come hear what is going on at Plantation and to also lend your voice and we can hear what, what you think and consider, consider your requests. So please come to our members meeting tonight. This is not live streamed, so you need to come in person. Please be there for that. Um, but you do need to register on Eventbrite. And also for this afternoon's homeless 
um, outreach, you also need to register on Eventbrite there. I don't know what this week has been for you. I know that school has started for some of us, and let's see the hands of the parents whose kids have started school this week. Parents, are you alive? <laughs> have you made it through this week? Kids, are you alive? Yes, yes, I heard a groan back there somewhere. But praise God, we've made it through this week. That is one victory that we can celebrate. We can, we can celebrate um, God keeping us and watching over us. And I know that this week has been hard for others as well. Some have had loss. And so our hearts grieve with you. But God still reigns on the throne. God is still walking with us. God is still providing for us, and God is still holding us up. So for that, we have much to be thankful for. Amen? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for waking us up one more day, for giving us a chance to do life one more day, for a new beginning one more day, Father for this opportunity to worship you amongst and with our brothers and sisters another day. And for this time that you've given us, we are grateful. Father, let us make the most of our time here on earth for you are coming soon. Father, continue to walk with us. Continue, Father, to hold us up. Let our faith not waver in you as the times get harder, but let it ever grow stronger as we profess you as Lord. Be with us, Father, as we cast our burdens unto you, and let us leave it there at your feet, knowing that you have full control and that your plans will not hurt us, Lord, but prosper us. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and mercy to us always in your name amen well we promised you last week that you would see the results of your efforts at our health fair and so we have a video to show you if the av team could please play it I have met the most wonderful people. This is such a great event. It's your inaugural health fair event for 2022, and I'm looking forward to supporting it today and for years going forward. So we're really excited that you came here to Central Park and whatever we can do to uh, get the word out. I definitely want to check out the other health uh, conscious uh, vendors here because I think that's amazing that we're here together as a community to get fit and healthy and well together. So that's my goal, to get out and around to see the other practitioners. They seem really willing to like learn about what's going on and like um, ask questions and do all the stations and things like that. So I think we're doing a really good thing here. Um, I think we should do it a lot more often. I believe today was a wonderful event because a lot of people get exposed to, you know, natural ways that they can heal themselves without having to be totally dependent. And the, all the natural way, new start represents starting new, using free stuff. I think it's also important to just educate, like, hey, this is what we're doing, and we're here to help you. We're not here and to normalize it. And normalize that it's okay that if you're a little overweight, here's some ways that we can reduce your weight. You know, walking 30 minutes or doing, um, you know, eating more healthy, things like that, that they may or may not know. So it's really important. Um, all of the stations are really, really good, um, have great information. So, so far, it's been a very positive experience. The atmosphere is amazing here. I love it, for sure, definitely. Being here present, I think it just has cosmic um, success throughout many, many communities, especially our community. We're going to do this on next year. We are so excited. We know, we know what to do even better now. And uh, we know what the community needs even better now. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it again next year. 
and it's going to be a, even a bigger turnout. I'm telling you, it's going to be great. The drone video that you saw just shows a little bit. That was about an hour or 30 minutes into the health fair opening. But after, we didn't take a shot, but after the park, um, after about one or two hours, the park began to fill up. And if you saw in the Zumba, our councilman of plantation, Nick Sartal, he was there too. He was doing Zumba. Thank you, video team, for not showing myself or um, Pastor Rose or Pastor Kevin doing the Zumba because I was, a, I was dying. So thank you for not showing that. I appreciate that. But as you saw, there were vendors who who did well, there were people who came out. Plantation, you did a fantastic job. And we want to extend our thanks to you because the results of it, I heard a conversation where someone said, I was just passing by on the street and I heard the drums and I wanted to see what was happening. I heard another conversation when they had passed through the children's department saying, is this all for free? Why are you doing this for free, all of this? And we said, because we just want to gift you. And they've never had that experience before, but probably the best, probably the best response we had were responses to study the Word of God and for baptism. So that was what we're aiming for, but now I'd like to invite Elder Barbara to tell you our continuation. Yes, so the health fair was the beginning, church. We, our aim as children of God is to go out in our community. And we've just met. We've started the relationship with the community through the introduction of the health fair. What better way to reach people than to reach them at a place where they need and need the help and we can. And so we don't want to just leave it there. We want to take it to the next level and continue to interact. And so I'm inviting each and every one of you to join us in our 18 days to better health how we can eat plants and feel whole you know a lot of the things I hear is that individuals say you know I really want to do this but I don't know where to start I don't know how to do it well we are going to give you just a little bit of something to get you started 18 days is a short time it's going to allow you to be able to start and to see not how well you can do but how well God can do through you in giving you the victory and I'm going to invite each and every person I'm going to challenge every one of our church members today and everyone here join us in the 18-day challenge invite at least one person share with your co-workers share with those who you know join us this will be an intensive challenge that will help you get started to say wow I didn't know God could do such great things through me in transforming my health it's more than just a challenge it's helping you to be better to eat plants, feel whole, and live whole. So join us. Remember, each and it starts August 20, and the kickoff, you will get the first three days. We'll go into it in details. We don't have the time, but the bottom line is August 20. You can, on the church link, just click. You'll join. You'll sign up. We'll get all the details, all right? So I'm looking forward to each, and I, I'm seeing everyone. I see your face. I'm expecting to see everyone bring one. Okay. So Elder Barbara, Albert, oh, huh. Elder Barbara, what we're saying then is the health fair was just the very beginning. The beginning. Because we can, we can preach our new start, but if we don't live mm -hmm. our new start, what we had sought to do will not come to fruition. Yes. So yes. we must now put what we preach into action. Yes. And this is the works part. The pray, the faith, by works, and we get the results, and we trust in God. Excellent. So please join us on August 20th, and thank you so much for what you did to make our health fair a success. Thank you. Hello, hello. There we go. Hello, can you hear me? All right, wonderful. Happy Sabbath. It is children's story time. I'm inviting the children to come down and, and sit with me. I have some wonderful news today. Oh, look at all the beautiful.
beautiful faces. Yes, come on down. Very good. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Oh, let's try one more time because I like to tell stories, but I like also to people to, for people to talk back to me. Happy Sabbath. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right. I came to church today because the Bible says I should bring fruit. I should bring fruit. So guess what I brought? I brought, can you tell me what this is, you guys? What is, oh, yes, it's a mango. And I got something else, I got something else. I have, what is this? A lemon. A lemon, yes, very good, a lemon. <laughs> and then I have, mm, mm. Banana. Banana. Oh, I couldn't even take it out, good, let's see. Can the parents see it? I have what? Bananas. How many of you have had bananas before? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, what about this one? Apples. I love apples. Apples are one of my favorites. This one's a tricky one. What about this one? What is this one? It looks like an orange. Close. <laughs> oh, I heard it. It's a grapefruit. Yes, it's a grapefruit. They're kind of, they're kind of soury. Well, this isn't the only kind of fruit that we have. Did you know that the Bible talks about another kind of fruit? And this fruit you can't, yes, right. Yes, right. It's called the fruit of the Spirit. Can we see the list for those that don't know the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit is not the fruit that we can actually eat, but is something that we actually, what we see and do. As you can see, I don't know if you guys can see back there. Yeah, the fruit of the Spirit. Let's talk about love. One of the fruits of the Spirit is love. How can we show love? How can we show love? Yes. By being kind and and sharing things oh yes amen by being kind for those who didn't hear and sharing things what about giving big hugs to our mommies and daddies that's showing love too right okay look what about oh joy what about joy yes yes when you're happy yes when you're happy and not just when you're happy it's when you're happy even when you're that's right that's joy. Joy is when even when things aren't going the way we want, we're still okay on the inside. We're okay. That's joy. Okay? What about peace? What about peace? Peace is, peace is, you know, if, there, if someone's fighting, maybe you should stay out of it or say that we, that's not how we should act. Oh, yes, we're keeping the peace. That's very good, keeping the peace. Or what about this kind of peace? We're not worried because we believe that Jesus will take care of us all the time. So no worry, there's peace on the inside. What about that one? Okay, what about this, guys? Patience. Wait. Oh, I love it. Patience means wait, she says. What about when mommy is making dinner or daddy's making dinner and they say, you say, I'm so hungry. And they say, be patient. That's right. Dinner is almost ready. That's how we're learning to be patient. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. What about kindness? Kindness is to share and be kind to one another. I love it. Yes, to be kind to one another just simply means being nice, right? Kindness. Okay, what about goodness? 
Yes, yes, yes. Goodness is like when you see someone drop a toy and you know it's not yours, you shouldn't take it and keep it for yourself. You should give it back. I love that. Did everyone hear that? If you see something and it's not for you, it's not yours, you should give it back. That's being good. Goodness is what? About doing the right things, right? Okay, what about faithfulness? Let's find somebody else who hasn't. Oh, come. What about faithfulness? Having faith in God. Beautiful, having faith in God. I'm gonna add something on top of that one. It also, um, faithful could be trusting God. Trusting God. God says, if, you're, um, if you trust in me and you do things that I ask you to do, then you trust me, right? And you're faithful and I can call on you at any time to do what I want you to do and I know that you're gonna be what? Faithful right faithful okay self-control this is our last one you oh you're right gentleness let's do gentleness and then we'll come back to self-control gentleness someone want it's when you're being gentle with something that's right not harsh yeah, we don't want to be harsh. We want to be gentle. You know, like using loving words, you know. Exactly. Okay, self-control, guys. Self-control. What does that look like? You have, you have to be careful what you say because if, because if you say something bad, then... then then you'll hurt another people's feelings. That's right. So we have to kind of restrain ourselves from saying things that are going to hurt people, people's feelings. That can be self-control too, couldn't it be? Well, what about this one, guys? What about you have a plate of cookies on the table? It's a lot of cookies, about 10, you know, maybe more, 25 cookies right on the table. Self-control says... I should probably take one cookie because what will happen if you eat all 25 of those cookies? Oh, yeah. You're going to get sick or you're going to get a tummy ache or you're not going to feel so good probably later. So self-control says, I'll just take one, right? I'll just take one. So we have fruit here. And this kind of fruit grows on trees, right? But we're learning about a kind of fruit that grows where? Inside of us, in our hearts and in our minds. And God plants these seeds so that we can grow in all of these wonderful things. Love, joy, peace, patience, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Amen. You guys have been a wonderful help for me today. So let's have prayer and let's ask Jesus to be with us so that we can exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. Bow your heads. Dear Jesus, please continue to plant the fruit of the Spirit within us that we may love, show kindness, gentleness, peace, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control so that others may see you through us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. And if you see me after church, I have wonderful fruit snacks for you to remind you about the fruits of the Spirit. <laughs> Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Good morning. Um, today's offering is for Christian record. Christian record. Uh, today's offering is for Christian record. And uh, the offertory 
scripture is John 6, uh, John chapter 6, verse 12. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. We can worship with our resources when we follow God's instructions about economy and savings. In several instances, God has uh, taught his children about the practice of savings. He inspired Joseph, the son of Jacob, who advised Pharaoh to not eat everything uh, during the seven years of abundance, but to put away 20% for later. And on the night the, the Israelites were to celebrate the first Passover, before leaving Egypt, God's first instructions were to choose a lamb according to the size of number of people in each family. And at the end of multiplication of bread and fish, the clear admonition was to not, not let anything be wasted. This is the same message about the penny wise is pertinent for today. We are preparing for, we are preparing for and eating more than what we need daily. We are buying more than what we need to wear. We are building homes with so much space, more than what we need to live in. The, this consumption-oriented society influences us to adopt a criterion other than the need to acquire goods. If I can pay for it with the money I have available or with the money borrowed, then it's okay to purchase it. This is, can be a socially acceptable, but this is, is this good stewardship? Saving helps us to prepare for life emergencies, realize our financial goals, prepare for retirement, and it helps us leave a financial legacy and to enjoy the benefits. Furthermore, we will be in a, pos a better position to partner in God's mission. Jesus and his missionaries were supported by a group of women who used their means to support them. And that's Luke chapter 8, verse 3. The early church members sold their properties to provide for the beginning of the Christian's mission. Acts chapter 4, verses 34 and 35. And Ellen G. White even challenges us to properly channel our resources. Each should keep a missionary box at hand and drop into it every penny that we are tempted to waste in self-indulgence. Is it not time to fix the leakages in our financial lives? This week, we have another opportunity to use our savings, worship God using the tithe and regular offerings, and to add to God's glory. It's not often when we get that opportunity to be a part of God's glory. So let's take advantage of this church. Let's take advantage of being part of his mission, part of his will to help give to his, or help further give to his glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much. Thank you for everyone that's here today, Lord. Thank you. It looks amazing to see our brothers and sisters, our family here in church giving glory and praise to you, Lord. And Lord, thank you for the opportunity that you give us to be a part of your glory, to add to your glory, to help support those who are going out there to spread your word. Lord, we ask that you bless us financially and bless uh, those who give willingly and joyfully from their hearts, Lord. Bless us all abundantly. In your name we ask this, Lord, and give you thanks and praise. Amen.
Happy Sabbath, church. Oh, happy Sabbath, church. Um, I, I feel that we are doing this way too much this year, James. Pastor Jen, James, and the, the education ministry, please join us up here, please, if you could. Pastor Rose. You want a mic? So today we are saying goodbye to yet another family. We, how many times have we done that this year? Like three, four times? <laughs> We're doing it again. So we invite the Williams family as you guys stand back there to please join us up here. This is the Didn't I say last time we're not doing this anymore? Okay. So church family, the Williams family chose to leave us. Small time. So this is, this is a different one because it is temporary according to what they say, but we know that we're going to hold them to it. We're going to hold them to it. But then, you know, we just talked about how God, we can't, we don't know what God's going to do, but guys, we, we just wanted to just show you our appreciation and gratitude and love for your ministry here at Plantation for the fellowship, for doing life together with so many families. And um, I, I, I can say on behalf of the entire church that you will be missed. And by the way, where's Devani? Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> but we, we're going to miss you guys. And um, the, the impact that you've had on Plantation, even before my time, I know has been tremendous. Uh, I mean, I think every single ministry at the church can say that the Williams family has impacted them in some way or another. So we're going to miss that. You guys will be missed, um, but we know that God has planted a seed and has, has, is sending you on a mission, um, and, and we're just going to be praying for you guys, praying that uh, you follow him and you are successful, but we'll also be praying that you do come back. Pray that you come well, back. Well, they, Other, haven't, they haven't sold their house, so. Exactly. You know. So, so <laughs> there, there will be a, a vested interest in you guys coming back because you always have a, a roof for your head. Um, I want to turn it over to, um, um, well, you know, well, you know, yeah, I'll let the, the education, you guys say something, but we have gifts for you guys from various departments and ministries, but I'll just turn it over to education to well, I, I feel like I could say a lot more than education. Um, I don't know if you, everybody knows, we're saying it like everyone knows, but when we say every ministry, we literally mean every ministry. Every single video production that you see here at this church has been led by this family right here. Um, they've been involved in Pathfinders, Adventures, Men's Ministry, Women's Ministry, Family Life, just name it all around and the film ministry that you had here with those young people was amazing so there's so much you've done 19 years ago to the month i walked into this church coming from the northeast not expecting to see anybody and there i saw this guy's like hey james what's up <laughs> i look around and who is it but colin now what you don't know is that he and I are from Antigua and he and I used to go to school from primary school or elementary middle school and here I walked in and here was my middle school my elementary school die right here so we're gonna miss you gonna miss you guys and from the education ministry Don um, I'm gonna miss you because I'm gonna have one less person to bother and to annoy um, and I just love annoying people <laughs> Um, and but uh, what you don't know is that Dawn is very quiet about it, but she is what well, you can say passively aggressive about Christian education, <laughs> and she encourages very quietly and let you do what you have to do, but her support and her 
her tenacity in that ministry has been unmatched. So we're going to miss you, and we wanted, Andrea wanted to give this to you uh, as a thank you. And I think we have more that's not here yet, but you'll get it. All right? Love you. All right. Planted that way, and I believe this is from the prayer ministry. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing journey. Uh, Dawn and I, we go way back from Moms in Touch when we prayed for our kids here. All the children that you see here, we prayed, we agonized, and we see the, pr the fruit of. of uh, that labor. So I'm just so blessed to be a part of their journey and I'm going to miss them dearly. And, and finally, we have a little um, envelope here, uh, a little gift from the, uh, the church family, from your church family. A uh, few ministries have contributed, but this is a little token to, to help you guys in uh, your new journey. So um, Pastor Rose is going to pray a blessing over you, but I'm going to ask the elders who are still here, just come up real quick so we can surround them yes. and, and, and pray Pastor Mike, over them. And Pastor please come up as well. And as they come up, I just wanted to give my personal thanks. When I came, Chance, you, you grabbed Chance with the, with the film and Breaking Point, and I thought, what, Plantation makes movies? And they make awesome movies. And not only that, in the last two losses of my family members, Don and Colin put together um, their videos. And, and you know, I, I, since I was running the funerals back home, Colin kept telling me, hey, Pastor Jen, I need the pics. And they would get the pics literally like two hours before the service started. But they made it happen, and it was beautiful. And you have... You have poured into our children, and we thank you. And if I may share, Dawn has said that for years now, she has want, she's had a calling on her heart to go to school and finish. But each time she thought a door open, God would say, not yet. But this time, God said, now. And I know there's a little fear because it's schooling, and it's hard, and you're taking your family and uprooting. But I just want to say... Jeremiah 29, 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. And where God calls and you follow, he will open up the way, every which way for you to accomplish what he has called you to do. And though we will miss you greatly and we will flounder for a little bit because who's going to do our videos? <laughs> we know. We know that we have to lend you out now to do what God has called you to do, but, but we're keeping claim on you to come back. And, and, and <laughs> we're saying this, but God has different plans. We know that. But you all know that you will always have plantation as your church. And you go with our prayers and our love and our blessings. You all know they didn't want to be here because this is not who they are. They don't like this type of thing. And they said, Pastor Jen, no, no, we got family to visit. We're not dressed. I said, you come in your jeans and, and t-shirt because they, we, the church knows you as working like this. Amen. So thank you. Thank you so much for what you've meant to my family, for what you have meant to this family and all those who've already gone forth, what you've taught them in the film ministry and what they're doing now. Thank you for your dedication and may you be a blessing to where God calls you to go. Amen. We, we thank God so much. For Dawn and Colin, his protection over their lives. But I got to tell you, I just got to say it, FYI, California gets fires, California gets earthquakes. I'm just, just saying, just saying. But we're going to miss you. We're going to miss you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for Colin, for Dawn, their family. The tremendous gift that they have been to this church, to the ministries of this church. And we have no doubt in our minds that as they 
transition to another place that you God who is God in Florida and even in California that you will go with them and that you will use them for your glory be with Dawn in a special way as she enters this calling upon her life as she matriculates may you touch her brain may you touch her faculties be with Colin as he continues to be the priest and to, and to lend support to the family. We'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. It is our desire that you bring them back here to us. But if not here, Lord, our prayer is that we will meet again up in glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath again, church. I'm going to invite you all to stand as we continue our worship service. We're going to sing a song that tells us God has never lost a battle. Amen? I, I thought like at least five, six, seven of you who could shout hallelujah and thank you Jesus because he never loses a battle. I don't know what battles you might have come in with today. It may have been your health. Amen, somebody. Oh, let me talk to this side. It may have been your finances. I don't know what it is. It may have been your family. It may have been that child you still haven't seen in so long. And then all of a sudden, God does what he does best. And so let me, let me just say this. Um, those struggles, those experiences that we have in our lives, we, we often equate to these mountains, these, these large obstacles that feel like they cannot be moved. But let me read for you what Zechariah 4 um, chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 says it says this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel that it's not by might nor by power so it's not by what we can do amen but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts amen and so he goes on to say who are you O great mountain what mountain do you have in your life ask that mountain. who are you compared to my god before zerubbabel you shall become a plane and i just want you to picture i don't know how many of you have gone hiking or or whatever it is and you've seen these majestic mountains just imagine just at the word of God those mountains being raised into a plane I, I, I don't know what struggles you guys have in your lives today but whatever that mountain is you think is insurmountable just know that our God has the power to flatten that mountain to dominate whatever that struggle is in your life all he needs you to do is to surrender that problem to him amen stop doing it on your own because it's not by your might it's not by your power but by his spirit i need you guys to sing this song with us as we get ready here just worship with us today god we thank you so much for being a god who removes those mountains you've never lost a battle father you've never lost and you never will Sing, sing. We listen 
to the sound of power on my lips. So Jesus, Jesus has broken the curse. He has never lost a battle. Come on, say, who are you? Who are you, great mountain? That you should not bow low. Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. Come on, say this with conviction. He never will. He never will. He never will. Oh, he never will. He never will. He is my faithful. He is my faithful Father, calling me out of the dark. And I cannot whisper away what He said in the light. Come on, proclaim this. He is my. He is my firm. He never will, he never will. Oh, 
Say our great defender. Here we go. Our great defender, strong tower, our strong tower. He never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. He never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. A great defender, a great defender. Do you believe it? A strong tower, a strong tower. He's never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. I need you to speed that over your knife. He's never lost. He's never lost a battle. Come on, sing it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. He has never lost a battle. He has never lost a battle. Come on, somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. If you are here today, it's because He has never lost a battle. Come on, my friend. Say, Thank you, Jesus. Woo. This is the God we serve. This is our everlasting Father who sent tall, victorious. He has never lost a battle. I don't know what you're going through today. It can be a situation at home. It could be something with your children. I don't know, maybe work, maybe school. And it look hopeless as if there's no way out. But we are reminded today that Jesus has never lost a battle. Jesus has never lost a battle. Deuteronomy 24 says that the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. How many of you believe that today? How many of you believe that today? Look, right now I'm, celebra I'm celebrating 
every chance I get, I celebrate. My, my, my boys just text and, and they sent a picture and they're in church. of us who are struggling because we have lost someone and the pain is so great let me tell you something I've read the story and the story ends in victory <laughs> the story ends in victory because one day on resurrection morning <laughs> one day we should see them again We're going to be taken to a place where there will be no more pain, no more hurt, no more sorrow, no more pardon. The victorious God <laughs> who have never lost a battle. If you are here today and you have a burden in your heart and you're seeking, you're desperately seeking for answers and you want us to pray for you, we're going to invite you right now. Perhaps it's a situation at home is, you know, that needs prayer over. Maybe your children. I don't know what it is. But God is inviting you to be bold. Perhaps you have been struggling with a decision to give your life to Christ. This is an invitation to you. Come right now and surrender to the Lord that has never lost the battle and will never win. Come, let's pray. Let's pray together. Let's pray. For those of you who are online and you're, you're, you're reaching out as well and you need someone to pray for you, that the number is online, text, and someone will reach out to you as well. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. Come, 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 come. Let's pray. Oh, Father, loving God, how awesome you are champion of champions and lord of lord almighty god you and you alone are worthy to be praised the god of influence resources the everlasting god provider redeemer and friend it is all because of you all because of you with a humble heart this morning we come thanking you for all that you have done for us dear God we can look back and trace your good hand your strong and mighty hands in our lives and today we say thank you thank you for all dear God thank you for not giving up on us oh God Thank you for always making a way where it seems to be no way. Thank you, Jesus, for being our champion. And Father, there are many requests, oh Father, on the hearts of your people this morning. You know, dear God, but we are happy because nothing catches you by surprise. We can be overwhelmed with the things and the cares of this word of Father, but you stand tall and, and you're whispering today, reminding us that you have never lost the battle. And all 
we have to do is come and surrender to you and allow you to fight the battle on our behalf. What an awesome God who's willing to fight for us. May God forgive us for trying so hard and fix things on our own, dear Father. Today we say no more or we surrender, dear God. Fight for us, dear Father. Father, before I continue, I want to ask that you would cleanse me from anything that is not of you. Forgive me, O oh Father, from all of righteousness. Cleanse me, dear God. So as I petition, as I intercede on behalf of your people, Father, Father, don't allow anything to hinder these prayers to go up to you. The Father, before me, there are many requests unknown, but you know them all. Prayers for marriages, dear Father. Prayers for our children. For finances, for healing, for us, for those who have lost someone, or oh Father, the feeling of hopelessness and loneliness, or oh Father, is killing them. Dear God, the God who have never lost a battle, dear Father, we just pray that you will send us your spirit like never before in the life of these individuals, dear God. May they hear your gentle voice, oh Father, whispering to them. And you would never leave them nor forsake them. May they feel your warm, gentle embrace, O oh Father. Warm in their hearts and strengthen them, O oh Father. As they go through the crucibles of life, O oh Father, I pray, O oh God, that they would never, never waver. Their faith would never waver, dear Father, but you would walk with them, dear God. And when the enemy come poking and, and, and speaking lies and defeat in their life, oh Father, I pray that it be only your voice and your voice alone, oh Father, they'll be able to hear. Someone needs you desperately this morning, oh Father. We pray for our children, oh Father, who's going back to school. Have mercy, dear Father. There's someone, oh Father, whipping up some evil scheme right now. We pray that you will send angels, oh Father, exceeding in strength and power, dear Father, to fight on their behalf. Your other is going back to school and they don't know how they're going to make it. There's no, there's no funds. Finance, financial aid is not coming through, dear God. But I pray that you would move mountain, dear Father. Open doors and windows of opportunities, your Father. God of plenty and abundance, your Father, move and shower your people with blessings like never before. Your God, there are those sitting in the pews. There's someone undecided. Someone maybe with a decision that is not of you, dear God. I pray that you impress that person right now. To give their life to you. There is no better way but to serve the champion of all. Maybe online there's someone making a decision right now, dear Father. May your spirit move, touch them, and impress them, oh Father, to reach out and give their life to you. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, dear God, for who you are. We pray that we would not leave this place being the same. Anoint us, oh Father, fall afresh in, on us, dear God. May we leave here full of your Holy Spirit, dear God. Whoever we come in contact with today or throughout the week, dear Father, we pray that they will be able to see Jesus like never before. Father, we pray for the one you have chosen once again to bring the word, dear God. He, he, he shared the word this morning, oh Father. We pray that you use him again in the mighty way. That every word that come out of his mouth, oh Father, would be words, oh Father, that someone need today, dear Father. And as he speak the words that you was put in his mouth. We pray that we will be renewed, transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, dear Father. Make us more like you, dear God. Take full control. 
be that champion dear God continue to be that champion our father we surrender we thank you Jesus for all that you have done is our prayer in Jesus precious name amen and amen our great defender our strong tower he's never lost a battle I just thought I'd get a piece of it. I just thought I'd get a piece of it. That's all right. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, everybody. Good afternoon, neighbor. Uh, those in house and those joining us online, we thank God for the privilege of worship. We affirm and declare that all the other gods of the nations are idols. But that our God created the heavens and the earth. And so as we come into this place, we come appreciating that we are in the presence of the potentate of the universe, the one who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. My hope is that we continue to worship experience the blessings that God has in store. I want to remind you that this evening at 6, we, as believers, will be given the opportunity to renew our faith. The communion service is not for perfect people, but for those who, who sense their unworthiness, even as they cling to the worthiness of Jesus. So I invite you to come on out and renew your faith, renew your commitment as we dine at the Lord's table. So here we go again, making our way back to Calvary. Here we go again, reviving, reviewing and reliving the drama that unfolded there. And though neighbor it happened over 2,000 years ago, some of us are still intrigued by it. Still intrigued by the shifting stages and sceneries. It's various archetypes, most of them evil, but some of them good. As all together they project on the screen of history, the story of our redemption. We're fully aware, we're fully cognizant of the fact that the events of Calvary were not just for the history books, but that they are for the present and the future because they serve as ever-living elements of the assurance of our salvation. Today, we'll be looking at Golgotha's Hill through the eyes of an unlikely character, hoping to find both inspiration and affirmation for our faith in Jesus. 
Additionally, it is my hope that someone today, upon hearing this soldier's testimony, will be drawn to Jesus. As we look at Calvary through his eyes, we'll do so beneath the caption, A Soldier's Confession. Let me turn our attention to our focus text, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, verse 54. The new King James Version's rendition says, So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly saying, truly, this was a son of God. I read again for emphasis, so when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the son of God. This is the word of God. And I believe it. Let's pray together. Father, God, we thank you so much for the movement of your spirit in the service this far. And as we continue in the worship, the worship to you with your word, we pray that you will remove every distraction. You will command and arrest every attention. That you will use this feeble, mortal, clump of clay to share words of truth words of hope we ask in Jesus name Amen so when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened they feared greatly saying truly this was the Son of God. Now, it is very instructive to note, neighbor, that this character in the drama and his statement have been recorded by the synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, albeit with a slight variation on Luke's part. Mark, in his record in Mark 15, verse 39, says, So, when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that he had cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Luke, in his account, in Luke chapter 23 and verse 47 says, so when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God saying, certainly, this was... A righteous man. Now, now, when you put it all together with its variations, a composite of this man's involvement and declaration emerges. There are many folks there that day, most of them shouting, mouthing, and hurling insults and disparaging words at our Lord. But this man... Note the synoptics. But this man, according to Matthew, along with his compatriots, said, Truly, this was the Son of God. Notice that all three identified him as a centurion. The King James Version's record of, of Scripture gives us some 21 times where a centurion is mentioned in Scripture. And there is an instance, a narrative there in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, where Jesus had healed the servant of a centurion by just saying the word. And I believe that this narrative provides some insight into the roles and responsibilities of a centurion. And so Matthew's Gospel, chapter 8, beginning at verse 7, after the man, the centurion, had come to Jesus and made the request, Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. 
Verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. And verse 9 gives us now a bit of insight as to the roles and responsibilities of a centurion. He says, For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my servant, Do this, and he does it. And as the kids used to say back in the day, James, game recognized game. He said, I, I know you're a person of authority. I can relate to that because I too am a person of authority. I've got soldiers under me. I have subordinates and I tell them go and they go. I tell them come and they come. I tell them do this and they do it without asking questions. So I know that you as a man of authority don't need to come under my roof. I'm unworthy for you to come under my roof, but you just need to say the word. Jesus responded in verse 10 by saying, and when he heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, surely I said to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. In verse 11, and I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. This non-Israelite, this pagan, this Roman centurion knew that all Jesus had to do was say the word. The same Jesus who eons before stepped out of nothing and said the word and created something. The same Jesus who commanded and it stood fast. The same Jesus who spoke and it was done. He said, you just need to say the word. I'm here to tell you that that same Jesus is still alive today. And he can speak into your circumstances, into your situations, whatever they are. Because he has never lost a battle. This was a centurion Pastor Michael made this declaration. According to Josephus, the centurion was an officer in the army of ancient Rome. Centurions got their name because they commanded a hundred men. He tells me that several paths could lead to the position of centurion. One could be selected by the Senate or by the emperor himself. Others were elected by their comrades. But the vast majority of them were enlisted men promoted through the ranks after 15 to 20 years of service. Centurions, they were responsible for training, giving duties, and maintaining discipline in the ranks as the company commanders. When the army was encamped, centurions it, it was who oversaw the constructions of fortifications which were critical while they were in enemy territory. And when the enemy was on the move, it was the centurions who escorted the prisoners and procured food and, and supplies. You see, the Roman army was an efficient killing machine with centurions leading the way. In battle... Centurions stood on the front line leading their men. They were expected to be courageous and rally the, the troops during the tough fights. The expansion and maintenance of the Roman Empire was due in part to these fighting men. Neighbor, a centurion therefore, not according to Josephus, but according to Rose, was not some wishy-washy, mamby-pamby, in touch with his feminine side type of fella. No, a centurion was a man's man, hardened by training and war. He was not susceptible to the impressions of either fear or piety, or pity rather. But the Bible says in our focus text, 
So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, this man of war, this courageous soldier, the Bible says that when he saw the things that had happened, he along with his compatriots, they feared greatly, saying truly, this was the Son of God. Permit me, but in my sanctified imagination this week, as I ruminated and played with this text a bit, I could see him, this centurion. Permit me, but he was on duty that weekend. According to tradition, this centurion's name was Petronius. Some call him Longinus, but I'll call him Petronius for our use today. I believe that when Petronius showed up for work that day, he had no idea that this weekend was going to be very consequential. No doubt by this time in his career, he had seen and overseen many crucifixions. As far as he was concerned, this was just another day on the job, just another day at the office. At least, so he thought, just another day for him to hoist and hang high another seditionist. Another insurrectionist, another self-claim would-be Messiah, another deliverer of the Jewish nation. He had seen it before. This was not his first rodeo. He was no neophyte. This was not his first time on the job. What do we have here, boys? Well, boss, we got three, and the one in the middle, he's the king of the Jews. Really now? All right, you know what to do. Let's string him up. But as he went through what seemed routine to him, he couldn't help noticing that there was something different about the fellow in the middle. He had seen many criminals, many malefactors. He had dealt with such characters. It was part of his job. But there was something different about the fellow in the middle. At a time when the process began, he couldn't quite put his finger on it, but he knew that there was something different about this fellow. Petronas was used to seeing felons kicking and screaming and hurling insults at them and at the people and even their gods as they were being led to their execution, but not this man. There was a certain noble, dignifying bearing about him. It was as if he didn't belong. He didn't quite fit into the scenery. He seemed out of place as far as Petronas was concerned. He first observed it as the convicts were being led away from Pilate's judgment hall, and it bothered him. There was a gnawing in his gut. It just didn't feel right to him. And then there was the darkness, darkness darker than a thousand midnights that descended on Golgotha's hill at high noon, and an earthquake that shook the very foundations of the earth as if nature was crying out to its creator as he hung dying on a blood-soaked timber. As a man who no doubt believed in omens due to his culture, Patronus saw these signs as signs from the gods. This was no ordinary crucifixion. And so he declared, not in whispered tones, but with a voice that thundered about the hurling insults of the crowd that day, he declared, truly, this was the Son of God. His booming baritone voice wafted along the eater waves and found resonance with his men who all came to the same conclusion, this truly was the Son of God. Clearly, the cataclysmic events coupled with the extraordinary restraint, humility, and purity and love shown by our Lord in his death made this man of war, along with his compatriots, realize that this truly was the Son of God. You know, neighbor, Luke in his gospel, chapter 19, verse 37 to verse 40, records that when Jesus had entered Jerusalem that week, the folks were beside themselves 
praising Jesus and calling him the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, they were ready to make him king on Sunday. Much to the consternation of some of the leaders who said to Jesus, hey, you better tell them to shut up. This is not good for us and the nation. If the, if the Romans hear this, it's not good for us. But Jesus responded according to, me, to, to Luke and said, I tell you that if they hold their peace, the stones would cry out. One of the very interesting things I find in this narrative is that some of the very folks who had shouted Hosanna on Sunday were now hurling insults and shouting crucify him on Friday. That some of the very folks who were ready to make him king on Sunday were now willing to make him a criminal on Friday. And I have lived long enough to appreciate Pastor Mike, not to, as, as a leader, not to measure my leadership performance based on the approbation of folks because folks are fickle. They change their minds. You can do everything right, but just mess up once and they write you off. Ready to crown him king on Sunday, but now we're calling him a criminal on Friday. But not this man. Not this centurion. And may I submit that this centurion was a stone. Follow me carefully. You see, Jesus said on Sunday, when the religious, some of the religious folks said, hey, hush, tell them to, to be quiet. Jesus says, if I did that, then the stones would cry out. But on, on, on Friday, when everybody was calling, crucify him, here was a stone called Petronas. Here was a stone, a heathen, a pagan, a Roman centurion who cried out, this was the Son of God. He was not a part of the chosen nation, yet he declared that day that truly this was the Son of God. In closing, Ellen G. White, in commenting on this in her seminal work on the life and ministry of Jesus, in the of Ages, page 7, 770, she says this. She says, in the bruised, broken body hanging upon the cross, the centurion recognized the form of the Son of God. He could not refrain from confessing his faith. Thus again evidence was given that our Redeemer was to see of the travail of his soul. And may I add and be satisfied. Oh neighbor, listen to me today. It is this, that the cross of Jesus Christ is still able to draw people to God. And the cross of Jesus Christ can resonate with one who was raised up, who was trained to be a brute. The cross could arrest his attention and elicit from him this declaration. Truly, this was the Son of God. Even in 2022, let me affirm and declare that there is still power in the cross of Jesus. That in spite of all the world's attraction, that rugged cross that was erected on a hill far away still has the power to save and to pull people to him. Years ago, I had the opportunity to go on mission in the former Soviet Union. Spent one week preaching in Russia 
another week preaching in the Ukraine. And I had an experience there in the Ukraine that has stayed with me even after these years. It's preaching in a city called Pavlograd. The people who did not look like me, did not even talk like me, I needed an interpreter. I was sharing the word of God. And I had an interpreter and we would meet, have a game plan of sorts, James, each, each day. And I would preach, he would interpret. And I'll tell you a little joke about that in a minute. His name is Eugene. And one day we were going at it, preparing the, the sermon together and him helping me to appreciate that some anecdotes do not uh, in, uh, translate in the culture and, and fixing it for me. And then my host pastor, Pastor Mikitok, he said to me, Pastor Rosa, there's a guy here who wants to see you. And, and I saw this huge burly looking fella his name was Anatoly he said he wanted to take me to a museum a World War II museum and, and I was excited about that and we went and he was such an awesome host and guiding me through and helping me to appreciate the history of World War II but as we went along the Holy Spirit tapped me on the shoulder and I said to him, you know, Anatoly, I thank God for the history lesson you've given me today, but God is more interested in your future than your history. I left it at that. A few days after, Eugene and I were in the study putting the sermon together when Pastor Mikitu came again and said, Pastor, Pastor Rosa, I need to say something to you. He said, did you come prepared to do a baptism? I said, no, I, I just came to preach. He said, now, 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 now you got to do a baptism. I said, no, I came here to preach. He said, no, no, you don't understand. He said, Anatoly has decided to be baptized. I said, praise God. He said, no, no, you don't understand, Pastor Rose. You see, back in the, in the Soviet years, he was a big deal in the Communist Party. And he deciding to be baptized, that's a big deal. He, he said, the only request that he's asking is that you do the baptism. I said, Pastor, suit me up. And, and I'm going to show you the picture one of these days. But here I was in the pool with this tall, burly fella. A man who was raised an atheist. Baptizing him in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Because the cross still has power to save. Save. When I was leaving, Eugene said to me, you know, I, when I was working with Eugene, Eugene, you know, Eugene would be in the corner and, and as I was preaching, he would be translating behind some desk, just sitting there, you know, you know, all sedate and, and all, and you know, and, and I'm there just working up a sweat and, and working the crowd and he sits there and he stood there just, and, and I saw, I said to him in one of the studies, I said, listen, Eugene, I can't be, be preaching like that and you just stand there just mouthing the interpretation. I said to him, you've got to mimic me. When, when I say, let's all go to heaven, you got to say it too and, and you got to do the movements too. When I was leaving, he said, Pastor Rose, you've turned me into a black preacher. I thank God that the cross of Jesus it is transferable from culture to culture, from language to language, from ethnicity to ethnicity. There is still power in the cross. Do you believe that today? The praise team is going to sing. We believe. And then I'll return and do the appeal. We'll close and we'll go home. Why don't we all stand right now as we sing the closing song and proclaim that we believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe today? Come on, church. Do you believe today? We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in you, Jesus. In this time of desperation, come on, sing. And all we know is doubt and fear. There is only one. There is only one foundation. We believe. We believe. In this broken generation, say. In this broken generation. 
accord we said. believe in the Holy Spirit and he's given us new life we believe in the crucifixion we believe that he conquered death we believe in the resurrection and he's coming back again we believe so sing this next part with conviction so let our faith be more than anthems. So let our faith be more than anthems. Greater than the song. today, don't we? The cross still has power to say. Jesus lived. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. He died, was buried, and rose again. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. And he's coming back again. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Perhaps you're in the house today and not yet committed your life to Him. We'd like to pray with you and for you. Or perhaps in line, you can just click that button that says next door. I'd like for me to remember your prayer. Just raise your hand where you are. I want to accept that today. Father God, we thank you so much for the assurance of salvation that we have because of the cross because of the cross we acknowledge our unworthiness even as we embrace the unworthiness the worthiness rather of Jesus because of the cross we know that we're not good but that Jesus is good because of the cross 
we can leave here knowing that we have been saved. Price has been paid. I pray for that man, that woman, that boy, that girl in house, online, who will watch it in the near future. Through the ministry of your Holy Spirit, you speak to each heart the truth of your words. We leave here knowing that our God is not dead, He's alive. We leave here knowing this world is not a final destination. We leave here knowing that our God will come and will not keep silent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you as you go. Happy Sabbath, church. Go on, God, today. Please be seated as they get, as you get ushered out. And uh, we're going we're gonna to just sing a little bit, if you don't mind. We're going to sing Faithful. Faithful is our God. Hey, I know there's a few singers out there in the congregation. If you want to come on up and sing with us, you're welcome to. Because God is too good. In fact, our God is faithful. Come on, can you sing with us? Hey, he's faithful. Faithful. Faithful.
live again, I'd like to encourage you to visit PlantationSDA.tv for more uplifting content. If you have a prayer request, please drop by PlantationSDA.org and let us know how we can pray for you. And if you're in the Plantation, Florida area, please stop by and say hello. See, See you soon. soon.